Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku was the legacy of All Might part 2. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 3rd comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content and live a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story The Hinakami from Wattpad. So let's start the video. 3rd POV the remaining time had passed and it was now the following week which meant that Izuku's provisional license had finally arrived. Izuku was thrilled to find out that it had arrived and had quickly made his way to the principal's office from the gym he was currently hiding away in and working out at since he wanted to increase his control even more. As Izuku entered the principal's office without even bothering to knock he found Dadzu, Nizu, sitting at his desk working as he held up with one hand the provisional license card that Izuku was here for. As Izuku went and reached for it with a huge grin on his face, Nizu pulled it away making Izuku pout at that moment. Dad Zu. It's not nice to flaunt something in front of your child and deny them what they are aiming for. Izuku said with a puff of his cheeks trying to act all adorable and innocent which has worked wonders on getting something from All Might but sadly it never tends to work on Nizu. Nizu just chuckled and reminded Izuku that the trick doesn't work on him like it does with Yagi and Izuku rolled his eyes as he sat down. I assuming you have something for me to do right away as a provisional hero? Izuku asked and Nizu's smile grew but only by a small fraction that most people don't notice but Izuku does and he knew he was right. Indeed, we've decided to not have you appear with All Might for a bit of time since we are going to build your name up first so you will mainly do your work study under me and Aizawa for now. As such, we already have a case you are going to be perfect for. Nizu said as he turned around and told Izuku to follow him into the side room attached to the office. As Izuku entered he could see case files which Izuku assumed to be his mission. Izuku started to read over the documents Nizu handed him and saw why he was going to be going on this mission. The mission he would working on what a kidnapping ring that had been kidnapping children with all different quirks that most would deem villainous, as it was believed that the group was taking these children to turn them into villains since some in society would just ignore the fact that they had gotten kidnapped and forced into the work instead of helping them as the traumatized children they were. Izuku felt a special type of hatred for these types of villains that would dare do this to children. From what I see in the files, the reason I am being requested is due to the fact that their main base is on the small island of Tashima. The villains have wiped out all of the pro heroes on the island and are terrorizing the residents as well since the island only had about, citizens total. This meant only a small police force and about to pro heroes were ever on the island, to begin with. Now though there is only the small police force that had to submit to the villain control and then no pro heroes due to their deaths. Nizu said and Izuku asked when the island fell under the villain's control and how many villains are on the island as far as the government knew. Nizu nodded his head and pulled another sheet of paper and gave it to Izuku. The details listed the fact that there were now about villains on the island which was part of the reason that the commission and government realized what had happened to the island as it was unnatural for such a jump in population to happen. There was the issue of the pro heroes having been reported dead but the villain group had dumped the bodies on the mainland of Japan so it took a bit of time for it to be connected to the island since there has never been a large number of villains or crime on the island. The villains had also gained control of the island for about months now though they have been operating on it for roughly months now since they had been slowly increasing their numbers to take over the island without tipping the local police and heroes off before it was too late which they were successful in doing. Now, the reason you are a perfect fit for this entire operation is due to the fact of your quirks. From about AM to about AM there is typically a heavy mist on the island that rolls in from out at sea and covers most of the island. As you can guess, this means that you can go in on a small boat and be undetected as you can become one with the natural mist and since the entire island is covered naturally it will allow you to not exhausted yourself in making the mist to travel through the entire island at a fast pace. Nizu said and Izuku nodded his head since it was indeed a very good reason for him having been picked for the mission. Overall, he would be able to go to the island and go undetected since anyone that comes to the island via other means would be watched heavily by the villains to ensure their operations are not broken. Even once the mist starts going away, Izuku could force mist to build up via his quirk and make it seem like a weird day of the mist staying longer than it should on the island which wouldn't raise too many flags as long as he didn't hold it for a long period of time. Though, 
Izuku would have around a five-hour period to get on the island and start the mission as he would need to locate all of the kidnapped children before he could start taking the villains out since they could use the children or the entire town of citizens as hostages against Izuku or any other heroes. Now, while you will be going in alone on the mission you will have backup waiting out at sea in some commercial fishing boats that will hold about pro heroes each for an entire team of pro heroes and some police forces that will help once you secure the children and start taking out the villains. Do remember they can't come too close to the island or else they risk setting red flags off with the villains so you need to time yourself on when you want to call them and start setting the fighting on the island off. Do you understand the risks and challenges of this mission since it is your first mission and you are going in without backup for a large portion of the mission? Nizu said as he looked at Izuku with a serious expression since this was a huge burden that even most normal pro heroes would be nervous and freaked out about. This wasn't like any other pro hero mission since they could call for backup and it would be there within minutes since backup might be waiting close by. No, Izuka's backup will be out at sea which will take them about or so minutes to get to the island once he calls for them. A lot of things can change in minutes and that also means a lot of dead bodies on his hands if he screws up. Izuku looked at Nizu and nodded his head as he spoke. I am confident I can do this. I understand the risks as such when will I be setting off. Izuku asked him and Nizu smiled slightly as he told Izuku he would be leaving late in the night to get to the coast where he would given a small black dinghy boat that looked like one of those from military movies in the past. He would then take the boat far out into the sea when it was closer to time for the mist to roll in and then abandoned it in the water as he would teleport onto the island once he reaches mist since he couldn't bring the boat to the island since the villains would find it. Izuku would also be required to sink the said boat to ensure it doesn't float to the island and be found. This does also mean that he would be trapped on the island without a way off without someone taking him off which would alert the villains. There were many risks in this mission as one mistake could lead to many deaths as Nizu wasn't afraid of Izuku getting killed by all of the villains since they weren't overly strong but it would hunt Izuku for the rest of his life if he was responsible for the citizens and children's death. After talking a bit longer, Izuku went and retrieved his hero outfit from the support department since it was still being held there. As Izuku walked in, Power Loader greeted Izuku as all of the staff had met Izuku over the months since he had been on the campus though none of the students know of Izuku yet since he's extremely good at hiding without using his quirks and with his quirks, it's nearly impossible to find him even for Nizu on the security system. Hello, Uncle Maijima. Izuku greeted the man as Izuku was more or less adopted unofficially by nearly the entire staff though none of them know the full details of what Izuku had gone through. They only know parts about Izuku's past such as him being forced to run away from his home due to the actions of Sir Night Eye in helping Izuku's biological mother abuse, neglect, discriminate against Izuku. This lead to the staff being told by Nizu to limit information about Izuku towards other people such as Lamillan since it could flow back to Sir Night Eye. They were also told that the only reason Sir Nai Ai isn't in prison and his hero license revoked is due to the risk of him spilling confidential information about All Might's form and many other secrets Sir Nai Ai has since he had already proven unreliable in maintaining secrets since the man had leaked some to Izuka's birth mother to harm Izuku. The staff was a bit confused about how it would have harmed Yusuku but they were told not to look into it which they trusted their boss, All Might, Eraserhead, Recovery Girl and the detective to know what was good since they had all confirmed they knew the entire story about Izuku's past. Anyway, back to Izuku getting his gear. What can I help you with boy? Maijima asked as he looked up from his desk. Izuku explained he was going out on a high-level pro hero mission and needed his outfit and support gear. Maijima nodded his head and grabbed Izuku's gear which included his weapons and other things. As requested, the wrists areas are made with the self-healing fabric since your black whips come from your wrists areas. The entire fabric is made to withstand the force of your quirk as we were able to get Eye Island to supply us with the stuff that David Shields made All Might's suit out of. It will be about a month or so for me to replicate the material myself so we will have our own supply since Nizu bought usage rights for UA mainly for you but future students as well if their quirks need something to hold up. Maijima said as he laid Izuku's outfit out and explained everything. There was also the pouch that went across Izuku's chest area that was specially made in a certain way. There was also the pouch that went across Izuku's chest area that was specially made in a certain way. 
Now this pouch area that goes more to your left chest area has the purpose of carrying things such as documents, notes, or smaller things but it also serves as another purpose. It's been made to withstand a large amount of force to protect your heart area from being hit. It won't stop everything but it would add a layer of protection since if you get hit in the heart you are dead no matter who you are. Maijima explained and Izuku opened the pouch area up and inspected how much he could fit in it. It wasn't large of an area but indeed could fit most of his notes he would make on the field or other important things he wants to keep on him outside of weapons and tools. Then Maijima pulled out Izuku's new Kodachi weapon since the other one didn't really survive Izuku's attack during his spar training with All Might that one day. Then Maijima pulled out Izuku's new Kodachi weapon since the other one didn't really survive Izuku's attack during his spar training with All Might that one day. Now, a warning about this. It has been made to be sharper, stronger, far more everything. Be careful with who you hit and where you hit someone with this as it can cut into steel with enough force behind your attack since it was made with quirks. This was done so it can survive the little trick you did against All Might in your spar where you somehow transferred some of your quirk energy into it and sent out the lighting as an attack. Do I make myself clear? Maijima said as Izuku nodded his head. Overall, everything else was standard equipment that Izuku had asked for such as some medical supplies to hide on his body, throwing knives, flash bombs, sleeping darts, and some other tools though Izuka didn't know how much of that stuff he would use it was far better to be overprepared than underprepared since people's lives would be on the line in the field. Izuku put everything up and stored it in the case as he thanked his uncle and headed off towards the staff room to say goodbye since he would likely not be back for a few days depending on how long this case takes. As Izuku entered, he saw all of the staff doing their works but none of them noticed him since he had used his mist to enter the room quietly as he had summoned mist in one side of the room and some on the ground that allowed the connection to happen as he teleported into the room. Izuku walked slowly up behind present Mike and then spoke which scared present Mike as he jumped out of his seat and turned around looking ready to fight. Really? Stop doing that. Present Mike said but in a normal voice since Eraserhead turned his quirk off as he screamed when he jumped out of his seat but Izuku was just laughing as everyone rolled their eyes. Chaos Gremlin, Nizu tainted you too much, Eraserhead said as he drank his coffee but noticed the outfit case in Izuku's hand. Izuku, why do you have your hero outfit with you since I know you don't have any cases since you should have only gotten your provisional license today and we haven't started your patrols? Eraserhead asked with a raised eyebrow. Hmm. Seems Nizu didn't tell anyone. Izuku thought as he looked at everyone in the room who was now staring at him. Good thing All Might isn't here right now. Izuku thought as All Might had to go to his agency for a while to start preparing for his shift to UA as a teacher since it was getting closer to that time. Well. About that. Izuku started and he now saw Eraserhead glaring with all of the other staff having unimpressed looks on their faces since they didn't like the feel of Izuku's starting statement. You see, I have a case in fact as I just got assigned it. I have to go liberate the island of Japan that had gotten taken over by about villains, save the citizens, save the children they kidnapped, all while doing it alone since my backup can't approach the island and will be about minutes out at sea unable to get to me. Izuku said and everyone's eyes widened as Eraserhead got up and asked what the hell he was talking about. Izuku turned his head slightly as he spoke again, did I mention there are kidnapped children? Yeah. Izuku said as he couldn't handle the intense glare the entire staff was giving him right at that moment. Nizu then walked into the room and Izuku decided to throw him under the bus on this issue as he told them all it was Nizu that gave him the case. This caused everyone to turn their glares at Nizu who didn't even flinch as he calmly walked past them all and grabbed some tea and made it while ignoring them all. After finishing the tea he went to the front of the room and looked at everyone and asked what was wrong. Eraserhead asked what Izuku was talking about when he mentioned something about a case that he would be doing alone. Ah, yes. Due to the location and the situation on the island, Raiden is the only individual capable of getting on the island without the villains knowing about it since they control the entire island and the citizens on the said island. The police there can't do anything due to the number difference as the few pro-heroes that was working on the island are all dead. 
Any attempts by others would lead to the pro heroes being found as such the only option left was Raiden due to his abilities to go in undetected via the mist which will allow him to sneak around and find the kidnapped children before starting a fight. Nizu said without batting an eyelash as he didn't see an issue with the whole thing. Eraserhead said that it was reckless to send a freshly provisional hero in alone on such a large and risky case. I understand and normally, this wouldn't happen but the commission and government see no other options. They wanted to send other pro heroes in before they considered Raiden due to that exact reason but no matter how they try to plan the mission out it ends up in failure in any scenario they have played out. As such, they contacted me about sending Raiden in and explained all other ideas they had before reaching their decision and I have to agree that any other hero would be found within moments of being on the island. This is why Eraserhead, Ectoplasm, and Midnight will all be going on the mission as some of the backup pro heroes out at sea so the moment Raiden calls for the support I will have people I trust to get to him quickly. Any questions? Nizu asked and they calmed down a bit when they were told that some of the staff would be sent with them but they still worried since they would be a minimum of minutes away from the island itself. Eraser had asked when the mission was and Nizu said it would happen early in the morning tomorrow but they would leave to the meetup point that night. I've already contacted all of your agencies and your patrols you would have gone on are now done expect you Aizawa since you are an independent hero. I suggest you start getting ready since you all will be leaving in a few hours as any school-related work can wait until you get back. I've also gotten people to cover you for any classes you would have taught. Nizu said as he walked out of the room not even waiting. The staff just groaned about the mess they were in as Eraserhead told Izuku he better be careful and not die on his first solo mission. Third POV Izuku was currently sitting at the meetup point with other pro heroes and police in the room with him which Izuku had to admit made him a bit nervous about everything that was going on since so many lives rested in his ability to pull this entire mission off without really anything major going wrong. No pressure, yeah right. Though, Izuku was glad that he would have some of the UA staff on the backup teams though it still sucked that they were going to be a minimum of minutes away from him and the entire island altogether which didn't really help his nerves but oh well. As the time passed, Izuku just continued to study the terrain and locations that were on the island to make sure he knew his way around the entire place so he wouldn't miss anything important. Izuku did notice that most, if not all, buildings were on one portion of the island where the docks were created at. This made Izuku think about where the villain base may be at since he was sure they didn't want the citizens to know about it since the villains were on the island for months before they took over so they needed somewhere to hide. If they had all stayed in the town then they would have been noticed since even though the island gets people from the rest of Japan and the occasional foreigner, the police and heroes would have noticed non-native islanders staying for a long period of time. This meant that they had to have somewhere to stay away from the May living portion of the island which made Izuku think about checking the uninhabited portion of the island for the kidnapped children. Izuku looked at the time and noticed it was about time to get moving. He placed the map of the terrain and the notes he made so far in his pouch on his chest and checked his gear over one more time to make sure he had everything since there was nothing he could get once he landed on the island. Izuku then moved towards the docks and saw the UA staff waiting for him as they told him to be careful and take his time as a mistake could be lethal. Izuku nodded his head and said he would be careful and would be waiting for them when he called. After that, he walked down the rest of the docks where the police chief who was in charge of the police force for the mission was waiting and he asked if Izuku, Raiden, needed anything before he left which Izuku didn't have anything he needed. As such, Izuku got onto the sinkable boat he was going to be using to get close to the island and started to head off in the cover of the early morning since the sun hadn't risen yet. It has been about minutes since Izuku had set off in his small boat and he could see the island of Tashima in the distance as such he cut the engine of the boat and just floated in the water since the fog hadn't rolled in yet as there was about two minutes before the typical time of the morning fog. As Izuku waited, he just mentally prepared himself for the jump into the mist once it rolled in since he would need to sink the boat and ensure it started to sink before he entered the fog, or else the villains would find it since the currents would push the boat to the island. The time quickly passed and the fog was rolling in like normal and Izuku started the engine and slowly moved in so he wasn't too close and right as he entered the fog he killed the engine and tore a large hole on the bottom of the boat which started to flood with water that had already met the top of his shoes as Izuku entered the mist. That filled faster than I thought it would. Izuku thought but he put it out of his mind as he maneuvered as part of the mist and landed on the edge of the island. As Izuku came out of the mist, 
he sent an alert on his communications device that he had arrived and got a confirmation that the fishing boats were in position as well as they acted like they were fishing though they would move around a bit over the next hours until they would be forced to leave later in the day to not arouse suspicions. This meant if Izuku couldn't solve everything in one day then he would need to sleep on the island without being found which was risky. After sending his alert, Izuku started to go back into the mist and decided to check on the town area first to see what was going on there. Looking over the town, Izuku could say it wasn't a good situation overall since he could tell who was a part of the villain group a bit easy inside the town since they walked with pride and confidence in their step while the actual citizens backed away in fear or moved to the other side of the roads to avoid blocking the villain's paths. Izuku also had to sit there and watch the citizens cower in fear as the police officers nearby could only stand by and clench their fists and turn their heads in shame. I need to finish this as soon as I can but I need to find their base of operations. Izuku thought as he slipped back into the mist and started to search the entire town but found nothing that would point him towards their operations being based in the town itself as he thought. As such, Izuku moved out of the town and headed up the mountain which resulted in Izuku indeed finishing the base of operations for the villains after about hours of searching the entire mountain. This meant there was only about one hour of normal mist lingering around the island left which was a tight squeeze in getting much done without having to use his own quirk to keep the mist around. In all honestly, Izuku wondered how the villains made the base of operations that he found inside the mountain area of the island since it would have been noticed by someone that such a thing was being built. As Izuku used the mist that was lingering into the building since the main doors were open, Izuku realized why no one noticed them setting this place up. It was literally an emergency shelter that the island had built in the event of a large earth. As Izuku used the mist that was lingering into the building since the main doors were open, Izuku realized why no one noticed them setting this place up. It was literally an emergency shelter that the island had built in the event of a large earthquake, tsunami, or something else that would have been a threat to the island. Smart of them to take this over, most people wouldn't come to look at it much since it was only for emergencies. Izuku thought as he slowly made his way through the place and used his mist to transport himself into the vent system since it was large for him to crawl through. While Izuku was exploring the villain operations, he used his device that he was given to take pictures of the villains and anything he found interesting. Though, he came to a stop at one vent as he saw children being trained in a room that had been transformed into training grounds. Izuku watched as the children were beaten when they made mistakes and told to do it better as the children had to fight each other and the loser was beaten. Sadly, effective way to motivate them to fight to avoid getting beaten, can't wait to take these bastards out. Izuku thought. Looking throughout the room from what he could see he found around children and Izuku wondered if that was all of the children they had or if there was more. Oh I get your ASS up here brat. One villain yelled and a kid with purple hair that looked around Izuku age stumbled up. Listen, this is the newest recruit we obtained. You will all show him the ropes and get him to adhere to the rules or else the punishments will be like the normal ones. Do you brats understand? The man yelled out and all of the children except the new one yelled out yes, sir. The man smacked the purple haired kid on the head and asked him in a stronger tone if he understood and the kid repeated the yes, sir words. Good, you are all that remains of the children we had obtained for our employer. He wants trained soldiers for his apprentice so I got hired to create well-behaved and well-trained men for this and I refuse to look back in front of that man. Any disobedience will be met with death because I only need a minimum of of you to meet his needs but the more I provide the higher the pay. So unless you want to die then you will be good little puppets so get to training and if I come back and find anyone slacking off then I will kill them said the man as he walked out of the room and left. Izuku noticed as he left that there was a few guards out of the room. I will need to take them out but I need to know if the man's words are true on that these are the only children left. Izuku thought as he decided to quickly scout the rest of the base out. About an hour passed and Izuku made it back to the room where the children had been training. The entire mist of the island had already departed by now and Izuku could no longer risk making mist without alerting the villains since it would seem unnatural from that point forward but Izuku did indeed confirm that only the children in the training room were the last ones alive since Izuku had found the other children or rather the location of the other children. Izuku had located one of the main villain's offices which included a map that showed a mass grave site that Izuku went and scouted out before the mist left the island. 
Izuku knew these villains would not hesitate to kill all of the innocent people on the island and he had sent an image of the grave and a warning to the command station back on mainland Japan. Izuku informed them that only children remained and that he would return to see if they were still in the training room. If they were then Izuku would start his side of the operation and start taking out the villains as best as he could without alerting anyone in the base. Izuku also said he would be calling for the backup to come to the island the moment he has the children secured to one room since there was only one way to the training room where they were. The reason to go this route was if Izuku could knock out all villains in the base then he could keep the children safe while the backup attacks the villains in the town. Overall, there were only about villains in the town while the rest remained in the base itself which Izuku felt confident in stopping the villains from getting past him while the backup secures the town. This would mean the citizens couldn't be used as hostages nor could the children be used. Also, the backup team would be able to come to reinforce Izuku once they cleared the town as well since they would likely make faster work of the villains in the town. As Izuku made his way to the vent he looked in and saw the leader from what information he gathered watching the children train. You all are getting better but it's time to move the training up a stage. Moving forward you will be now be learning how to wield guns but don't bother trying to kill us since you are only being given paint bullets that show where you hit on a target so they can't kill us though I bet it could you brats, said the man with a chuckle as all of them fell into line and waited for the man to bring their tools out. The man ordered his two men in the room to start the next stage of training while he went to do some other work. As such, once he left and the doors open he knew the two men inside were actually the ones that had guarded the door which worked for Izuku. Izuku used his mist to enter the room and right as he came out of it he turned the float quirk on so he wouldn't drop down yet. Right as both men finished giving the children the weapons and told them to shot at the targets on the other side of the room, Izuku used the sounds of the gunshots to his advantage as he dropped down and turned one for all on itself at percent. Right as the two noticed him it was already too late as Izuku kicked them both hard enough that they blacked out due to their brains hitting their skulls which caused them to black out. Indeed, they are overall weaker but it's their numbers that allowed them to do what they needed. Though, based on what I heard the man guy is a bit more powerful. Izuku thought as he looked at all of the children who were staring at him. Keep firing to hide what has happened okay? I promise to get you all out of here as soon as possible. Izuku said and some nodded their heads as they came out of their shock and started shooting to create noise. Izuku then grabbed some rope from the room's supplies to tie them up. Though he did decide to duct tape their mouths shut so they couldn't scream for help in the event that they woke up before he was done with the base. Izuku then went to the door and it opened as Izuku looked into the hallway before stepping back in. This room is the furthest in the base and only had one hallway leading here from what I saw of the blueprints in the main guy's office. Izuku thought as he looked at the photo he took of the blueprints and studied them again and nodded his head slowly. Izuku then told them all to stop shooting. Okay, my hero name is Raiden and I was sent here to save you all since the government discovered that the villains had taken this island over. I've already knocked those two guys out but I need to deal with all of the other villains in this base that will make their way here once they discover this. Once I defeat them all I can lead you all out of the base and away from here. Do you understand? Izuku asked and they all nodded their heads. Though the purple-haired kid raised his hand and Izuku pointed at him. Is there not other heroes for this outside of you? This is a sizable villain group after all, said the kid and Izuku asked for his name which he said was Hitoshi Shinso. Izuku nodded his head and explained why it was only him. As it stands, I am the only hero on the island due to how hard it is to get here without the villains knowing since they control the entire thing. There are police and pro heroes hiding out at sea on boats waiting for me to call them which I will be doing in a moment. Though while they take the town back I will be fighting the remaining villains here until they arrive. Again, there is only one way to this room and they will have to get through me so I need you all to stay here as well as knock those two out if they wake up. Any other questions? Izuku asked and none of them had any and told them to be careful. Izuku then made contact with the command station back on the coast. Send the backup. I've secured the living children and will be starting my work on all remaining villains in the base. Izuku said and the order was confirmed as he was told it would be about minutes for the police and heroes to land on the island. Izuku then cut the communications and exited the room as he looked into it and saw no one still. 
As he left he was careful to not cause much sound but slowly he summed mist that traveled on the ground slowly in front of him in the event the alarms went off. This way he could be quicker in flooding the hallways with his mist to use it to teleport behind villains and quickly land the knockout blows. After arriving in the first room, Izuku opened it to find it had five villains whose backs were turned to him as they were watching a TV with a game show on it. Seems they are on break. Izuku thought as the room was a small room that looks converted into a break room but horribly done. Izuku pulled out his sleeping darts and threw one into each of their necks as he quickly grabbed their heads with black whips to stop them from shouting out before the drugs took effect. After a few moments, Izuku dropped them and then headed towards the next room where he kept repeating this process until halfway through the base he got caught by a villain who was staring at him in the middle of the hallway. Izuku turned OFA up to his limit of percent and darted off as the floor tore up due to the force but right as Izuku did it the man shouted for help. Izuku punched the man as he dropped the power to percent which sent the man into the wall but again it was too late as more people had walked out due to the man's quick shout which sent the alarms off. Izuku de-iced to go all or nothing as he flooded the entire base with mist as he quickly made his way between people and wasn't aiming to just purely knock them out but to disable them as short-term threats since Izuku was using his kodachi to cut ligaments in the back of people's legs which made them fall down. The wounds wouldn't kill them nor would it leave them unable to walk in the future but for now they wouldn't be able to move since the ligament was cleanly cut. Izuku turned his comlink on for any pro hero nearby and asked if anyone was on the island yet that could hear him. After a few seconds, he got a reply. This is Eraserhead, what is your situation Raiden? Eraserhead asked and Izuku was glad to hear his voice. The villains know I am present in the base though I cleared about half of them before the alarm went off. I am currently engaged in a full-scale battle inside the base as I've flooded it with my mist. What is the situation in the town? Izuku asked and Eraserhead told him they were about finished in the town so they would be coming in about minutes due to the distance of the base from the town. Izuku confirmed as he kept dealing with the villains that came at him. Though the main villain himself showed up and told his men to back off as he looked at Izuku. You have no idea who you are messing with, you should be afraid of my employer since he could turn you into a shivering mess from how powerful he is so give up now so I can just kill you instead of him coming after you for this mess, said the man which made Izuku roll his eyes since that sounded like a typical villain threat. The man seemed offended but told Izuku it was his funeral than to oppose his employer. The main villain activated his quirk which turned out to be a form of metal-based control as he started to make the metal bend as they turned into sharp poles which got blasted off towards Izuku who started to dodge them. Though they kept coming which forced Izuku to turn into mist since it was a somewhat tight hallway with all of the poles coming at him. I see how you got on this island, interesting. I think my employer would enjoy knowing of that quirk, said the villain with a smirk but Izuku didn't care as he charged forward as he flooded the hallway with more mist and appeared in the group of villains behind the main guy and took more of them out which enraged him. Don't ignore me. He yelled out as Izuku just kept defeating his men while keeping an eye out to make sure no one went towards the children. More time passed when Izuku decided to quickly change targets and went straight for the main guy which threw the guy off balance since he had been chasing Izuku around the hallway the entire time trying to stop Izuku from destroying his men. This resulted in a percent punch to the man's stomach which sent him right into his own men knocking a few of them out as well as the man guy though Izuku was sure the man had a lot of broken bones though Izuku couldn't find it himself to care about someone that slaughtered so many children. Izuku contained to make work of the remaining villains that kept coming his way as the hallway was by this point filled with bodies on the floor. The hallway also had a heavy scent of blood, puke, and other bodily fluids from Izuku beating the hell out of the villains since he did put a bit more power than fully needed in each hit. Though it all came to an end when Eraserhead came flying in as he kicked a guy's head into the floor. Izuku was a bit stunned since Eraserhead had somehow jumped over all of the villains which in Izuku's view was pretty damn cool in Izuku's view. I take it the town is secured? Izuku asked and Eraserhead nodded his head and informed Izuku of the situation. Indeed. We left Ectoplasm and a couple of pro heroes guarding the town. Everyone else came here since all of the remaining villains are here. Eraser had said as they could hear the fighting from the other side of the villain group that had been fighting Izuku. Well, this was quite interesting for a first solo mission turned into a team mission. Izuku said with a smirk on his face as they continued to work on the remaining villains. 
After a bit longer they met in the middle of all of the bodies with the other pro heroes. Okay, Eraser had want to join me with the children? Izuku asked and the man nodded his head as they left the villains to everyone else to deal with and clean up. God Chaos Gremlin, did they shit themselves facing you? Aizawa asked as he smelt the horrible smell in the hallway as they walked towards the room the children were in. Izuku rubbed his neck and shrugged. I guess so. Izuku said not wanting to mention the fact that he likely forced them to dedicate themselves due to the large hits to their stomachs and interests which likely helped the villains in that matter. Soon they made it to the training room and opened the door to be greeted with all of the children pointing guns at them which shocked Eraserhead whose eyes went wide. Oh calm down they only have paint bullets, Izuku said which calmed Eraserhead down. Okay children all of the villains have been taken care of and you are free. We will work on getting you all out of here once the villains are all dragged out by the police so just sit tight a bit longer but the situation is over. Izuku said with a clenched fist in front of him which made the children smile a bit as the younger ones came up to him and asked him questions about himself. Izuku did his best in answering questions and keeping the children calm as a few minutes later a few officers walked in and started to question the students for their names so they could get a hold of their families. Izuku did notice one kid who turned out to be Hitoshi Shinso was a bit away from the group. As such, Izuku moved over to him and checked to see if he was okay. Hey, are you okay? Izuku asked as he leaned down as Shinso was sitting on the floor. Yeah, just wondering what happens now for me? Shinso said and Izuku asked what he meant. Turns out Hitoshi Shinso was a child that was not actually kidnapped but instead sold by his foster parents to this villain group. Okay, they were one, wrong to do that. Two, you are not a villain so don't believe their bullshit. I've had a pro hero sadly villainous me when I was younger since they wanted something out of me back then and turned my own mother against me sadly, that forced me to run away and live on my own before I got adopted by a few pro heroes who helped me out. Third, let's see what we can do about your situation. Izuku said which stunned Shinso as he watched Raiden call out to Eraserhead and walk over to the man though he couldn't hear what they were talking about but assumed it was about what he had just told Raiden. So, Aizawa. I know Hizashi wants a child and though you adopted me. I don't exactly feel the child's need of his since I am an independent kid who was forced to grow up years ahead of everyone else. As such, want to adopt Hitoshi Shinso over there who was sold to this villain group by his foster parents? By the way, his quirk is brainwashing and he wants to be a pro hero which would be amazing to be taught by you as well. Izuku said with a grin on his face and Aizawa just looked done with Izuku. Fine. I'll call my husband and see if he would like to foster the kid before we move on to the who adoption to make sure the kid will be okay with us, Aizawa said with a roll of his eyes but Izuku could tell there was a small smile under the scarf as well since Aizawa always did want a kid to take care of with present Mike which Izuku couldn't really ever feel much to his own displeasure. It isn't like Izuku doesn't see them as parents but Izuku raised himself with the help of the past users in that forest for so long that it would be impossible to force himself to settle down as they would need. It's why he was glad Nizu took him to his own which was in a forest which made him feel comfortable and Nizu never treated Izuku like a normal child but instead he treated him like a grown adult who had handled himself for so many damn years that wouldn't want to be downgraded in their independence. After waiting a bit, Aizawa came back and said they would foster the kid. As such, Izuku took Aizawa aka Eraserhead to Hitoshi Shinso and smirked. Congratulations you are being fostered by Eraserhead here and his husband present Mike. Izuku said as he waved his hand and walked away from them so they could get to know each other better. Izuku was glad he could help Hitoshi out in finding a safe place to live his life since that was always an important thing in Izuku's mind for children since he didn't want people to keep going through what he did with Inko Midoriya or having to raise themselves as he did in that forest. Though, Izuku was glad that he had everyone at UA as a family now. Third POV. It's been a few weeks since the raid on Tashima Island and Izuku could say that the island was returning to its normal operations overall. It was decided by the government to add a few extra pro heroes to the island with normal routine checkups on the island and all other islands that belong to Japan as well to ensure another event like this didn't happen as easily. 
When Izuka did return to UA after the mission he was praised by All Might for completing the mission by himself for so long but also scolded him for taking such a mission without telling him since it was indeed his first actual mission. All Might also would glare at Nizu every so often for allowing the mission without informing Yagi but Nizu easily withstood the half-hearted glare since All Might was more proud of Izuku completing the mission than being assigned it. Though in other news, Izuku has stopped by Eraserhead's and present mix home to see how Hitoshi Shinso had been doing. One afternoon when Shinso had gotten back from school, Izuku was already in the apartment waiting in his hero outfit as he sat on the couch and Shinso was just staring at him. Yo! Izuku said as he did a slight wave and then drank the coffee. Shinso continued to stare at him but then moved into the kitchen to get some coffee as well before he sat down on the couch and asked what Raiden was doing at his foster parents' home. Ah, uh, I came around to snoop for any blackmail to use on Eraser, always need some form of dirt on others. Izuku said with a grin on his face while the rest was hidden by his hood. Shinso sat there looking at Izuku with a deadpan expression before he spoke. I don't know if I should be concerned that you want to blackmail by foster parents or scared that a stranger is in my foster parents' home without them knowing. Shinso said which made Izuka laugh. Oh, yeah you wouldn't know since I stay at my other place all of the time since I have a hard to living around others. Izuka muttered lowly but Shinso caught it and raised an eyebrow as he asked him what he didn't know. Ah, well I actually got a key to this place since Aizawa has partial custody of me. I don't live here though since my situation was a bit unique that I can't feel comfortable living in a highly populated area so easily. It's part of the reason I knew they would most likely take you in since I would never be able to fill the void of them wanting to raise and care for a child since I am too far independent due to the situation I found myself in my childhood. As such, I live with Principal Nizu of Yue in his forest home which is more comfortable for me than in more populated areas. Izuku explained as. Shinso sat there stunned to learn that the person that saved him with the other pro heroes was adopted and was partially under the custody of his new foster parents. Anyway, in reality, I am here waiting for Eraser to get back since we have a drug bust to go do when he gets off from UA, Izuku said and that snapped Shinso out of his thoughts as he nodded his head. As Shinso started to work on his schoolwork, Izuka decided to ask him if he was doing any training for UA since he wanted to be a hero student. Shinso paused and said he was doing some physical training via running but he didn't know really what to do since he knew his mental quirk wouldn't help much. Izuka nodded his head and knew from what the other users provided him based on All Might's memories was that the UA entrance exam was a robot-based one. As such, Izuku had dug around UA a bit using his quirk and found the information on the exam which turns out the robots had shut off buttons. Izuka decided to give his soon-to-be adoptive brother, in a way due to Aizawa's partial custody over Izuku, a hint about the entrance exam. You should ask Eraserhead to train you for the entrance exam to increase your odds at passing but I will give you a hint at the exams. It's filled with robots but those robots do have shut off buttons if you can find them. Izuku said with a smirk as Shinso's head snapped up to him. Shinso asked him why he would tell him how to pass the exam since UA would want its current students to keep quiet about it to the public. Izuku shrugged as he spoke, I think your quirk would be amazing for heroics and the exam is biased so a hero's job is to help correct unfairness. I just happen to be doing it by giving you some tips for the exam and how to prepare. How you use that is completely up to you so if you pass it will still be in your own power since you will have to be able to move fast enough and work hard enough to pass. Izuku said as he stood up as Izuku heard the door move. A few seconds later Eraserhead and present Mike were standing in the living room looking at their foster child being in the same room as the adoptive child of Erasers. Problem child why are you here? Not that I don't like you being here but normally you just go to Nizu's home after you're done with your day unless you have other things to do. Eraserhead asked as he sat his UA stuff down. Izuka nodded his head and looked at the clock, then he looked at Eraserhead. It seems you forgot about the drug bust we are going on in an hour? Izuku asked with a wave to the clock as Eraserhead pulled his phone out and then cursed. Yeah. I forgot. Thanks for reminding me. Eraserhead said as he started to prepare for going on on heroic work. After about minutes, the man came back as he was ready to get to work. Eraserhead and Izuku said their goodbyes and headed off to go do their drug bus. 
As they were doing the drug bust, Izuka decided to bring up the topic of if Eraser was starting to train Shinso since there isn't that long left before UA starts. So, you going to start training the kid? Izuku asked and Aizawa rolled his eyes. You are the same age as him and you call him a kid? Aizawa asked and Izuku shrugged as he knocked two villains back. Not my fault I have the mentality and mind of an adult. That is the fault of one Sir Night Eye. Izuku said as he jumped over an attack from one villain as they made their way deeper into the base of the villains with police slowly making their way behind them as they cuffed all of the villains that got knocked out. Yeah, still it's weird. I also will train him likely starting next week. Though with his quirk it will be hard for him to pass the exam regardless due to the limited physical training we will get done in the short period of time. Aizawa said as he threw a villain into the air with his scarf and kicked the guy as he came down in front of him. Izuku just shrugged as he didn't want to let Eraserhead known that he had given the kid a hint about the exam itself though he was sure his adoptive father Niza knew somehow that Izuku had since that man knew everything. Soon the raid was over as they had cleared all of the villains. Izuku sat on a box in the final room and looked around him. Well, they were rather easier than the villains I fought on the island. Izuku muttered and Aizawa just rolled his eyes. Those villains were indeed a bit stronger than these random thugs for this drug ring but it also is a lower ranked ring as well, Aizawa said which made Izuku nod at his head. Well, I am going to go home and finish the reports for all of this. Nizu is having me start doing patrols during the daytime since he wants me to start establishing a more known presence. Izuku said and Eraserhead nodded his head. Soon they wrapped everything up and went their separate ways. As Aizawa arrived in the house, Shinso called out to him. Yes? Aizawa asked as he could see Shinso was nervous a bit. I was wondering if you could train me for UA's entrance exam. I know my quirk will not give me an advantage with the fact that the exam is robot-based but I would at least still try my hardest. Shinso said and Aizawa nodded his head as he said he would be glad to help him train. Aizawa did say that even if he failed there was still a way to get into the hero course via the sports festival which Shinso was glad about. While that was going on, Izuku had arrived back at his home with Nizu in Yue's forest. Welcome back. Nizu said as he was working on his computer in the living room. Izuku nodded his head as he went up to his room to change. After coming back down he sat down across from Nizu with some tea in his hands. So as of recent you have finished your teaching certificate which is good and you are nearly done with your first year of college level work. This leaves us about three months before the entrance exam and then the following two months after that. What are you wanting to do with that time to best use it? Nizu asked Izuku since their plans were a bit ahead of schedule. Izuku had ended up making quicker work of his teaching certificate and college level work than he predicted which has left more time to get things done. Oh. I think I will start my second year college work since I would like to have a college degree sooner instead of later but all other time I think I will put it into just heroic work since I want to rub my progress and abilities into Sir Night Eye's face since sooner or later he will get wind of who I am. Izuku said as he wanted to get a bit petty with that man. Nizu nodded his head and agreed it would be a good approach to everything. As such, Nizu told Izuku he had set up a social media page for him already which was all under his hero name, Raiden. Izuku was shocked to see he already had some followers already. They are from the island mission it seems since they all live on that island. They most likely had searched up your hero name and had been digging to the point they found it since I had made these social media accounts the moment you had the provisional license since we need to build you a fan base online. You are going to be a mix between daylight and an underground pro hero who hides while doing work but won't shy away from the camera if he gets seen on it which the social media platform will help build up your fan base since you won't constantly be in the daylight. Even those you save at night might want to find you online which will provide them a way which will also let people know you do work at night and during the day as well. Nizu explained and Izuku could only agree with the entire statement that his adoptive father had given him. Izuku did enjoy the profile picture a bit which was a picture of him in his suit facing a camera which Izuku wondered where the hell it got taken at but wasn't going to question his father. You just need to be yourself on social media and it will slowly grow with your success, Nizu said which earned a nod of the head from Izuku. Izuku could already see some posts from the islanders that he helped save and he decided to reply to some of them. 
most of them were just thanking him for saving the island while others asked what some of his hobbies or other things that he did were. Izuku replied to what he felt comfortable with without giving away too much personal information since again he was still hiding from Sir Night Eye currently. After about an hour of doing that he decided it was time to just be lazy for the day since he had done enough work for one day so he just went to bed a bit earlier so he could go train since he had no patrol or cases to work on for the next few days. Izuku wanted to push his control even more since he was now sitting at percent and would like to get to percent before UA's entrance exams. At the rate, I am going, I should hopefully get to percent before the end of the semester which would be nice. Izuku thought as he started to drift away into his sleep. Third POV. The remaining time before the UA entrance exam came to an end and Izuku was now sitting at percent control of his quirk which was really damn good of him considering he had all of the other quirks as well on top of that control. Izuku had been pushing his limits lately during his physical training which resulted in the increase in his control like he had wanted to get before the exams had arrived. Izuku had also finished his second year of college work as well so Izuku now only had two years of college work before he obtained his bachelor's degree in quirk science as he was doing amazing in the major focused classes but still had to learn everything else from his other subjects which were slowing him down in his honest views but he still wanted a higher education. Outside of the training and education, Izuku had also been steadily increasing his fan base on social media as he now had about followers on his social media. Izuku had decided to take more advantage of his social media and was more of himself as he would post things like workout routines, quirk theories on how to apply different types of quirks, and other things that just came from the inside of himself. Izuku had kept engaging with his followers to ensure they stayed active with him and he stayed active with them as well. In other news, Izuku did keep up to date with his adoptive sibling Shinso who was doing a decent job at the training that Eraserhead had put him through. Izuku didn't know the chances of Shinso passing the actual exam since it was heavily biased against him but Izuku hoped Shinso remembered the hint about the shut-off buttons that he gave him that one day. Though, it would be up to Shinso himself to put the work in. As Izuku thought about Shinso, he had finally arrived at the front gates of UA since he had been out on an early morning jog and didn't want to stay on campus so he ran to the beach and back for a wake-up exercise. As Izuku walked towards the gates to enter the campus he got stopped by someone with blue hair and glasses that seemed judgmental of everyone around him. This kid is a hardliner when it comes to rules. His personality also reminds me of Sir Night Eye which pisses me off. Izuku thought as Sir Night Eye was someone who was really stiff and thought himself higher than others in Izuku's view like the blue-haired kid did. Sorry, what did you say since I was in my thoughts? Izuku asked as he had completely ignored the kid which seemed to have irritated him even more. The blue hair kid introduced himself again as Tenya Ida and he was telling Izuku that he should be in his middle school uniform. Izuku just slightly nodded his head but then said, yeah, no I don't have one since I never went to middle school, to begin with. I did online classes. Anyway, you are about to be late to sign up for the exam if you are wanting to check in. Izuku said as he pointed at his clock which he had moved to be 30 minutes ahead just to fuck with the person named Tenya Ida. Ida stiffened up and hanked Izuku for giving him the time and quickly walked towards the check-in while Izuku just vanished into the campus using his quirk without anyone noticing. Izuku then appeared inside of his home where he found Nizu finishing some things as he waved to Izuku. I'll get change and we can head down to the control room. I'm not taking the exam am I since I am going to be a part of the staff? Izuku asked as he grabbed something to drink. Indeed, you won't be since you are already in college and only need the training that will happen privately with the staff. Your main focus is teaching and hero work since the commission was greatly pleased with all of the cases you have finished. They don't care if you don't formally attend as a student and accept you being a teacher's assistant. Nizu said which made Izuku nod his head as he walked to his room to get some clothes to change into after showering. After the shower, Izuku walked downstairs in his hero outfit with his hood pulled upwards. I am ready to go when you are, Izuku said and Nizu closed his laptop and put it in a bag as he jumped on Izuku's shoulder. Soon they made their way across campus and as they were walking, Izuku muttered how he wished he could take others into the mist with him. Nizu asked why he doesn't try which Izuku responded with that the original quirk user tried and it turned into a nasty death of the person he tried to do it with. 
The mist quirk knows how to rebuild our own body but another person just comes out in a mess of blood and lumps. I was warned never to do it with someone unless I'm trying to kill said person which isn't something I normally would do as even taking someone into it requires a small delay instead of my almost instantaneous breakdown into the mist by myself. Izuku said as they arrived at the control room. Nizu only nodded his head as they entered the room and none of the other staff had arrived yet outside of Eraser Head who was sleeping on the floor. Izuku sat down at the console with Nizu in a chair next to him. Izuku turned to Eraser Head and spoke up, How do you think Hitoshi will do? Izuku asked him. Eraser Head shrugged as he said he trained the kid the best he could with the little time they had. He had a base to work off of which was good but still wasn't in the prime condition I would have liked him to be. Unless he scores rescue points I don't know if he will pass. Eraser had said which was fair since the man only had a short few months to work with Hitoshi Shinso. Though only Azuka knows that he told Hitoshi about the shut-off buttons. Time passed and all of the staff had no arrived inside of the room as the written tests had been completed which left only present Mike not in the room as he was giving the speech about the physical portion of the exam. As he was explaining a student stood up and asked a question about the missing robot from the pamphlet and talked about how UA shouldn't make such an error. If anyone was guessing who it was then it was one Tenya Ida who Izuku felt really annoyed at. Present Mike then cut the student off as he explained what the fourth robot was which made the student apologize and sit down. If anyone was guessing who it was then it was one Tenya Ida who Izuku felt really annoyed at. Present Mike then cut the student off as he explained what the fourth robot was which made the student apologize and sit down. God, that kid really needs to loosen up. He irritates me so much that he reminds me of Sir Night Eye Stiffness which isn't good for a hero in my view. Izuka muttered but not low enough as the entire staff heard it. Nizu rolled his eyes and asked if Sir Night Eye was going to be a standard now of what not to be in a hero for Izuku to compare others against which only a smirk and a head nod from Izuku. Everyone just shrugged it off since Izuku had all the right to be petty as hell with Sir Night Eye and the staff wanted to be petty as well but needed to be a bit more professional unless the man was going to be brought down. Soon the students in the exam moved from the assembly hall to the buses where they were all taken to different sections. While Izuku was watching the screen he noticed one person from his past which was the individual known as Katsuki Bakugo. Seems you managed to keep your nose clean Bakugo. Izuku thought as he looked at Bakugo's file and saw there were some more issues but they stopped about a year after he was forced into therapy by his parents. Nizu had allowed Bakugo to still take the exam since Bakugo had kept his record clean after that and the new school he went to didn't report any issues outside of his attitude slowly changing over time to be calmer thanks to the anger management and therapy his parents put him in. As such, Nizu with the second opinion of Hound Dog allowed Bakugo to take the exam and as long as he does good enough he will be allowed into the school. Izuku then turned his eyes to Shinso who was in the same test site as one Tenya Ida which made Izuku roll his eyes at that fact and hoped the child of Ida didn't start shit with other people. As they waited, present Mike went out onto one of the exam starting areas and yelled out for them to go with zero warning. Most people didn't move but some like Shinso who got trained by Eraserhead started running in at his test site. Some others like Bakugo also ran in as well which caused people to follow him. As Shinso was working on his exam site, he had gained about seconds before anyone else entered the site which allowed him to score some points but breaking a robot where he used a part of it on other robots made it easier for him. Good job Hitoshi, now just keep it up. Izuku thought as he turned his attention to the other screens and watched people. Overall, there were some decent people with their quirks being used but also some with weaker quirks that had creative ways to apply their quirks. As they sat there, Izuku could already tell some of the people who were going to pass and knew some that wouldn't make it unless they had scored a lot of rescue points. As they were moving forward, Izuku noticed something on the console in front of him which caught his attention. As he looked at the console and started to dig into it he heard Nizu activate the zero pointers with All Might pushing the red button. That is when things took a turn in the situation as what Izuku had been looking at was an alert system for the school's online security. An alert had popped up about something that had attempted to enter the network but was blocked but Izuka felt it was off so he dug into the alert and discovered that the attempted hack was more successful than the system thought. Shut the zero pointers off. They have been hacked. 
Izuku yelled as he started moving quickly on the console in front of him alerting everyone. Nizu asked what he meant and Izuku explained what he saw and noticed. The codes have been altered. There's an adjustment to the sensing code so the robot won't pick anyone up unless it's right in front of the sensor which would be too late as it would already have killed the person. Izuku explained as he noticed the slight change in the code since he had helped Power Loader check everything over for the entrance exam and prepare the robots as a training method since he moved all of the zero pointers into locations. Nizu and Power Loader was helping with the hack while Izuku looked at the screen. A girl in one of the exam sites had become trapped under some rubble. I'm going out to save the girl in the exam site as the robot is too close to her and the shutoff system won't stop in time. Izuku said as he stood up and turned into mist quickly. He heard Nizu tell him to get there quickly since with his mist and everything else he could move at a far faster pace than All Might could. Izuku was already out of the building and in the air as he created a stream of mist throughout the air thick enough for him to travel through straight to the robot. As Izuku arrived he saw Hitoshi had gotten the girl out of the rubble and was pulling her away but it was still too close for Izuku's comfort so he continued the attack he had charged up. Right as Izuku arrived he had the entire robot covered in mist that hit himself and the robot as he used his sword to cut it apart at a fast pace due to him traveling through the mist and appearing at different moments. If you look from the outside of the mist it appeared as if a miniature lightning storm was going on when in fact it was Izuku Yagi moving around at such a quick speed that the green lighting arcs off of him left trails that connected with each other that made it appear like a lightning storm. Izuku made quick work of the robot and used his mist to hide into a building not to be seen by the exam takers. Everyone watched as the robot fell apart into many different parts that had clean cuts across them which stunned everyone as they wanted to know whose quirk that was since no one had shown something like that in the exam so far. Hitoshi felt like he knew who did that since he had kept up to date with his adoptive brother Raiden's actions in the news which he seen talking about how a mist with green lighting appears wherever Raiden was sighted at. Oh. And if you don't know, Eraserhead and Present Mike finally adopted Hitoshi completely as they are no longer his foster parents but his legal adoptive parents. While all of the students were told that the exam had come to an end, Izuku used his mist to sneak away back to the control room which he was given looks from everyone. What? Don't like my takedown? Izuku asked with a grin on his face. Why so flashy? Eraserhead asked and Izuku pouted. You try to not be somewhat flashy with literal lighting arcs coming off your body at such high speeds inside of mist. If I move at that speed without the mist you normally wouldn't see so much lighting but the mist helps them stick around a bit and shocks things inside of the mist which is an added bonus. Also, I didn't want to be seen yet. Izuku said with a shrug of his shoulders but then they moved on to the topic of who had tried to hack UA and kill students. Whoever it was has a lot of courage of us not finding them since this will be met with retaliation. It could also mean that the individual is a part of a larger organization that plans to attack us again in the future so we should be careful moving forward. Izuku said and they asked why he thought that. No one has ever dared to touch UA since it's so fortified and guarded. If they are brave enough to touch it once then they are brave enough to though it again. They will only get more empowered the longer we don't catch them which will result in larger attacks on us. I don't believe a sole individual person would be foolish enough to touch UA without a lot of resources behind them which points toward it being a part of a large group that launched this attack. Izuku explained his reasons and they all nodded their heads and would be on guard moving forward. Izuku thought felt there was something far more attached to this attack but couldn't know what it was as even danger sense wasn't pinging off. As such, Izuku just had to wait for whatever it was to come for them and deal with it then, 3rd POV. The acceptance letters had been sent out and those that were accepted into their individual departments would be arriving at UA in the coming month as UA was now in full swing of preparing for the next school year. Izuku was honestly proud of Hitoshi Shinso who had successfully gained enough points to enter the hero course of UA. Hitoshi had only scored so many villain points even with knowing about the shutoff button and would have been points short of securing his place but thanks to his efforts in saving the zero gravity quirk student who also got accepted, Hitoshi had gained extra points which put him in th place. This secured his position and he was placed into the class of, a since Eraserhead would be teaching him underground heroics instead of Vlad King who was a limelight pro hero. 
All of the other students were split up between the two individual teachers with entrance exam students per teacher with two recommended students in each class for a total of per class. Izuku wasn't counted in any class since he was a provisional pro hero who was assigned to a special class with Nizu as in reality, Izuku is a part of the staff instead of being a student. The only studies he needs to do in regards to UA were the hero portions which he would learn with time and was given privately most of the time anyway. As such, Izuku would switch between the classes when he wants to or if a teacher asked him to join one for some reason. Otherwise, Izuku would focus on his own private training and hero work. Now enough of that as it was time for us to skip ahead to the first day of classes. As we arrive on the first day of UA's new school year we discover Izuka Yagi aka Raiden walking through the hallways without a UA uniform on which got him stopped by one Tenya Ida. It's you. Why aren't you wearing a uniform? Ida asked as he walked up to Izuku with the zero gravity girl next to him who Izuku remembered was named Ochako Yurarika. Izuku looked at Ida and just sighed as he turned around and just walked away which left the two students stunned. Ida came out of his shock and followed behind Izuku and kept talking about how he needed to get into a uniform since it was required by the school. Izuku then stopped outside of A and directed his hand to it. I believe this is your stop. As such, I will be leaving you now. Izuku said as he turned around and walked away not wanting to deal with Ida's annoying stiffness. The two students of A just stood there in silence but after a few moments, they entered the classroom while Izuku had made his way through the halls to the staff room as he was given a desk in the staff room to use whenever he was on campus. As Izuku entered he saw Dadzua, the eraser head, and he groaned to him. Your students are annoying me already. Ida needs to stop being so stiff in rules. Izuku grumbled as he walked to his desk and he could hear chuckles from everyone. Now, now, my boy. I am sure they will relax more after Eraserhead has his first class with them since he always does scare them on the first day. All Might said who Izuku just laid against as the man was sitting on the couch near Izuku's desk. Izuku just shrugged in the agreement or whatever it was and looked at the clock as he saw the classes would start soon. I think I am going to get changed into my outfit and stock Dadzawa's class today before I go out for a short patrol since nothing else really happens on the first day, Izuku said as he got up and grabbed his hero outfit from under his desk where he put it. He then walked into a side room that was attached to the staff room and quickly changed as he threw his other clothing into the case where his hero outfit was previously. After finishing he walked out to see most of the staff already had left since the classes would start soon. The only one left in the room really was All Might who was reviewing the student files for the first years. All Might saw Izuku in his hero outfit and grinned. I always enjoy seeing you in your outfit. It shows how far you have come from all the way back then. How much control have you gotten since the exam? All Might said and asked which Izuku felt the quirk called one for all for a few moments as he could hear whispers nowadays from the past users when he had it active since the connection had grown that strong. I was at percent at the exam, I am now sitting at percent which is a high amount since percent would be your prime which means I am far stronger than you are now in physical strength. I was able to take you on at percent with the other quirks but now sitting at percent with the quirks I should wipe the floor with you unless you pull a fast one on me, pops. Izuku said as he sat down next to All Might as they spoke about his current one for all training. All Might nodded his head with great pride on how far Izuku had come. Izuka decided it was time to head out to the field to make sure he got there before A did. As he reached outside he discovered Eraserhead was already there who nodded at Izuku. I don't plan to show myself but I will be hiding as I watch, Izuku said as a mist came out and around the training field. It wasn't a heavy mist but it was enough that Izuku could travel through it. Izuku had also spread it far out to make it look more natural so when it came out they didn't even raise an eyebrow at it except Hitoshi who has had multiple encounters with Izuku's hero persona. The students had questioning looks on their faces on why there was a light mist slash fog roaming around the training ground when the news didn't indicate anything like this in the weather nor did they experience it at all this morning. Though before anyone could put more thought into it, Eraser had call on them and explained what they would be doing. Today we will be doing a quirk apprehension test to see where you all stand currently. Bakugo, you scored first with villain points so get up here and throw the ball. You may use any means including your quirk. 
Eraser had said as Bakugo caught the ball and went into the white circle. Bakugo stood there and then threw it as he yelled, Get out of here, so loudly which made Izuku want to chuckle as it wasn't it normal catchphrase from childhood where he would yell die. The ball went about meters which caused some to say how fun the test would be which Izuku rolled his eyes at. Even Hitoshi felt the urge to groan as he saw the look in his adoptive father's eyes as the man spoke, fun you say? Alright, let's make it even more fun as the person in the last place will get expelled as I will deem them with no potential and expel them. Eraserhead said with a huge grin on his face. Some like the gravity girl that was with the annoying kid named Ida complained that it wasn't fair as they had earned their spots in the hero course. Fair? Is it fair for natural disasters? For villain attacks? For child abusers? For people to get away with so many crimes due to their power and influence? To have to live on your own as a child and survive? No. It's not fair nor is the job of the hero world fair as it's the job of the hero to try and correct as much unfairness as they can and save people. If you don't like it then leave as I can replace you with someone from general studies that would love to become a pro hero. Eraserhead said as he ended up using some parts of Izuka's life in his little speech. The students tensed up at the threat of being expelled and were a bit motivated by the speech that their teacher had given them. Izuku watched them all go through tests and was making mental notes of them all on how they did or what their personalities were like. Izuku was surprised that Bakugo had truly tempered out for the most part. He still had some sort of aggressive attitude but nothing from what it could be as he was communicating with those around him which Izuku was glad about in all honestly. Moving on to others, there was without a doubt a pervert in the class who was called Mineta. That kid needs to tamper his pervertedness out soon or he will likely get expelled after a while. He showed some potential but not enough to keep him around forever if he doesn't change. Izuku thought as he watched the tests come to an end. The person that came in last was none other than Mineta as Hitoshi had come in the th place with scoring slightly above Mineta in a few tests which allowed him to not end up in the last spot. I lied about the expulsion, it was a logical ruse to get you all to do your best. Now go to the classroom and get your schedules as you're done for the day. Eraserhead said as he dismissed them all and started to walk away. Izuku looked and saw the rich girl that got recommended who was called Yayarozu who said that it was only logical for him not to expel something as it was a lie. She said she thought it was clear but no one else thought so as even Bakugo believed it. Though, unluckily for her, she was wrong as Eraserhead expelled the entire class last year that he was given. They all only stayed in the class since they had some form of potential that Eraser had believed he could pull out of them. Soon they all left to the locker rooms to change while Izuku came out of the mists and walked over to the side of the building where one All Might was standing with Eraser Head. Yo! Izuku said as he walked over and they greeted him. They talked for a bit about the students before Izuku decided he was going to go out on a patrol. As such, he left the campus using his mist because of surprise for everyone including the past user of the quirk. Izuku learned that the clouds in the sky count for the mist quirk that allows him to teleport inside of his mist. Due to the fact that clouds, mist, and fog are all the same thing which is water vapor it allowed him to easily travel using clouds as well in the sky which became such an easy way for him to travel. This was a fact that Izuku had only discovered after Nizu and everyone found him since he was out on patrol on a cloudy day and had gone high in the air with the float quirk when he activated his mist quirk as he was going to turn into it with some he created when suddenly he felt as if he could enter the clouds. He attempted it and discovered he could indeed do it which became one of his main transport methods since clouds are normally always out in the sky and are natural. As such, no one ever thinks about the clouds in the sky and Izuku never fears crashing into the ground due to the float quirk as well. As Izuku had left, the students from A and other classes were leaving the campus when Bakugo was stopped by some people in his class. The shark tooth boy named Kirishima was one of the people that had stepped Bakugo. This boy wanted to befriend Bakugo which Bakugo accepted even though he acted like he didn't want to accept. In truth, he wanted friends that wanted to be friends with him and not his quirk like he had in the past. He in truth wanted friends like his former childhood friend Izuku Midoriya who he used to bully but sadly he never found where his childhood friend went after years of him being gone as Inko Midoriya had actually gotten arrested for child abuse and child abandonment. 
This fact had shocked his family and lead to much regret on Bakugo's part after he had gone through years of therapy and anger management which helped him with his issues. He came to deeply regret the actions he had done when he was younger and wondered if he would ever get to meet his old friend for who he had created such an insulting nickname, I hope you are happy wherever you are Izuku. Bakugo thought as he walked out of the UA gates. Though, unknown to all parties at the time, they would be met with a raging storm that would be coming for them soon. In this raging storm, many truths and secrets would come out that others would have liked to keep hidden and others' dark secrets would arise and make their presence known in the world once again to threaten all of society. However, luckily for society, a hero of valor had taken an ancient mantle and would stand in the way of the darkness that was approaching for he was Raiden, the hero of valor. Third POV it had been a few days since Izuku had watched the quirk apprehension test for A and he had also gone and saw the same test that Vlad King did for B. Though, his was without the expulsion threat that Eraserhead likes to do. Neither class called out the weirdness of a low mist slash fog being on the training grounds when the weather wasn't calling for it nor did it seem natural. Izuku told both teachers that the students would really need a lesson in situational awareness as something so glaring as unnatural fog on a training ground without the correct weather conditions should have been questioned which both teachers agreed upon. Now, while all that happened, Izuku was currently sitting in a cat cafe. Izuku had found this nice small cat cafe that was in one of the areas he typically patrolled as it was between the more populated area and the more crime-infested areas which was a perfect spot for him to stop for a break on his patrols. Izuku had found this nice small cat cafe that was in one of the areas he typically patrolled as it was between the more populated area and the more crime-infested areas which was a perfect spot for him to stop for a break on his patrols. As Izuku was sitting in the room he heard the doorbell go off indicating someone walked in which was strange even though it was a slash cat cafe as he typically was the only one that came around this time of night or rather a day. It was a.m. after all since he normally did his night patrols on Saturdays and Sundays with daytime patrols the rest of the time unless something directly required him to change it. As Izuku waited to see who entered he became shocked to see who it was as it was his adoptive brother Hitoshi Shinso or rather Hitoshi Aizawa now. Does Dadzawa know you're out this late? Izuku asked which caused Hitoshi to freeze up when he heard the voice and turned to see who it was. Um, yes. Hitoshi said with earned a chuckle from Izuku as he spoke out, that sounded like a question and not an answer. Just tell me the truth so I know. I'm not mad or going to rat you out to him as long as you're not doing something dangerous which I don't consider coming here dangerous. I would recommend finding one closer to home instead of this far out though. Izuku said and Hitoshi was more relaxed as he didn't seem tense anymore. Hitoshi explained that this was the cat cafe he used to come to all of the time when he lived. Closer to this area which Izuku could understand. Let's make a deal, you only come to this one during my break so I can ensure your safety since you are really close to the high crime infested area. I have my provisional license so I can legally defend myself and you. When I leave from my break then you have to return home and on all other days except Saturday and Sunday, you find one that is closer to the house deal? Izuku asked and Hitoshi agreed. As they sat there enjoying the silence outside of the cat's purring, Hitoshi decided to ask Izuku some questions. You know, even though you're my adoptive brother I don't know anything about you, would you mind telling me your actual name or hobbies? Hitoshi asked which was a fair question since Izuku hardly is ever at Aizawa since he sees them at the school or on patrols. Izuku nodded his head and decided to offer some information up. I will tell you but you can't go around talking about me since there is a pro hero that caused my entire situation which we can't lock up due to the secrets he knows. It would be troublesome for quite a few of us if he gave the information out as it would throw society into a mess. Understood? Izuku asked Hitoshi who nodded his head. Izuku sighed as he straightened up more. Do you want my current name or my old name? Izuku asked and Hitoshi asked for both which Izuku gave him. I currently go by Izuka Yagi. You might think I would take Aizawa as you did or something like Nizu since he is my other adoptive parent who has shared custody of me but Yagi actually comes from another pro hero who you have met but I won't say who. They also wanted to adopt me but they are ill and can't really care for me and themselves so I took their last name on in recognition of my connection to them as my connection with them is a deep one. 
Izuku said and Hitoshi was shocked he met the other person that wanted to adopt his adoptive brother as he wondered who it was since he has met a lot of pro heroes lately. Izuku then told Hitoshi his former last name. My former last name was Midoriya which is ironic because of my green hair, Izuku said as he lowered his hood showing his entire face which shocked Hitoshi on how young Izuku was. Shocked that I am the same age as you but already a provisional pro hero before UA even started up this year? Izuku asked which Hitoshi nodded his head as he was really confused. Due to situations that are going on, the commission provided me a provisional license so I could help out. My very first mission was the mission where I met you actually. Izuku said with a smirk on his face as he drank some of his coffee and looked at the clock to make sure he wasn't out of time. Why, why did they send a complete rookie to save us? No offense. Hitoshi said as he didn't want to offend his adoptive brother. Because due to my powers I could make it to the island, unlike others. Not going to explain the entire thing but the mist you've noticed at the exam or at the quirk test Aizawa did is me hiding while I expose some of my power. I've hardly used more than percent any time as I am still growing. Anyway, I'm diverging. Izuku said as he brought the conversation back to the main point they were talking about. My last name was Midoriya and you need to be careful of using my first or either of my last names. The pro hero that decided to make me out as a villain as he turned my own mother against me when I was a child, is likely still after me and sadly we can't do anything to him unless he decides to make another move against me since there is a lot at risk. As such, just call me by my hero name if I am in the outfit. If I'm not then just use Izuku since it would be safer against that pro hero. Izuku said and Hitoshi asked what the pro hero wanted from Izuku which made Izuku tense a bit and Hitoshi noticed. It's something I couldn't give him since I was entrusted to keep it safe by another pro hero who was dying at the time. The hero that came after me was greedy for it and didn't believe I should have obtained it even though I was entrusted with it. As such, he turned my mother against me as he witnessed the physical abuse she did right in front of her. He also leads to me getting starved for days before I ran away since she threatened to kick me out. This led me to escape to a forest for years before the hero who entrusted me with the thing found me with others he trusted. I then ended up in the care of Nizu and Aizawa at UA which also resulted in me getting my provisional license due to my power. I am also a teacher's assistant at UA as well by the way so don't be surprised to see me in class. Izuku said as he dropped a lot of information bombs on his adoptive brother which was fun to watch the range of expressions go across Hitoshi's face. Hitoshi then spoke after being silent for a bit of time, is that why you act so much older than you are? I've had to grow older mentally due to my life but not to the degree you have. Hitoshi said and Izuku nodded his head as he confirmed it. Indeed, that is what happens when you live in a forest without being in contact with society starting from around the age of which is roughly when I ran away. I had to physically care for myself which lead to mental developments as I learned everything I could to survive with the help of the past users which is still going to cause large mental developments since they couldn't do anything physically for me. Izuku said as he finished his coffee and noticed the time which meant he needed to get back out on patrol for the rest of the night. Hitoshi, it's time for you to go home since I have to go back on patrol. Remember the deal we made? Izuku said and Hitoshi nodded his head as he stood up and left the cat cafe with Izuku who dissipated into mist which Hitoshi found cool as the night was a bit foggy already. Izuku walked Hitoshi from afar a bit as he watched him leave towards Aizawa's home. After watching for a bit he left to go back on his patrol and was dealing with criminals but Izuku noticed something. Something feels off, it feels too calm. I've only had a few criminals in this high crime area. Izuku thought as he stopped on a rooftop and analyzed everything he knew so far. For the last night or so there had been a large drop in villains that Izuku would find. He also noticed it during the day a bit as well since he would still go to high crime areas since he wanted to help as many people as possible. Nighttime though always had far more criminals most of the time but there was hardly anyone around. As Izuku moved around he found a few criminals and defeated them quickly as they were doing a drug trade. Izuku asked them where everyone was at since there tends to be far more of them out and about. One man didn't want to answer but another was a bit more loose-lipped as he said there was a villain group that recruited a lot of people for an attack. 
Izuku asked where the attack would be and when but the man only said he knew it was going to be tomorrow and that was it. This annoyed Izuku but he couldn't get anything more out of him as he turned them over to the police that he had called. After watching the police leave, Izuku decided to text the UA staff chat and the police detective as he wanted them all about a large drop in villains which was connected to a villain group planning an attack on Monday somewhere. They asked if he knew where but he said he only knew it was meant to be tomorrow but had no idea where all the low-level villains were attacking as he asked. The detective to send an alert out for heroes to be on guard tomorrow for a large gathering of villains attacking somewhere possibly. Sadly for Izuku and Yue, the villain attack would hit far closer to home than they would realize, 3 RDPOV. Izuku woke up in his bed as he had just left the dreamscape where he was talking to all of the past users. Izuku's ill feeling had transferred to them it seems as even they felt some sense of forbearance about this day. Something felt off since last night and Izuku didn't know why as he kept thinking about the low-level villains that were gathering for the villain attack or whatever the drug dealer claimed that night. Izuku decided to just go straight into wearing his outfit all day today even though he didn't have a patrol scheduled today as it was an off day for him. As Izuku came downstairs he saw Nizu finish cooking the breakfast as they both sat down. Today feels off for you I assume. Nizu asked and Izuku asked if it was off for him as well which he nodded his head at. You don't live as long as I do as a quirked animal with human intelligence that makes humans nervous about without having a huge feeling of good sense on things, Nizu said as he told Izuku that he had all of the cameras watching all of the campuses in case they are somehow attacked since it was all he could do right now. As they finished eating they headed to the school where Nizu had warned all of the staff to be on guard since even he didn't feel like the day would be a good one which had set them all on high alert since Nizu's gut feelings tended to be highly accurate. As the day went on, Izuku walked around the building when Danger Sense went off with a huge warning. The quirk was telling him that someone with high ill will were nearby which Izuku pulled his phone out and alerted Nizu, Eraser Head, and All Might about since they were the only ones to know the full truth of his quirk and Danger Sense. They all responded that they would be on guard while All Might said he was still heading towards the school as he texted. A few moments later the security system went off alerting to the fact that someone was at the gate and had broken in but Danger Sense was telling him that there was anti-air danger closer to him in the building so Izuku activated his quirk as he spread his mist out into the vents so he could travel quicker. As he moved around the Danger Sense went off right above the staff room when he got close to it which caused him to drop into the room ready to fight but when he appeared there was no one in the room which he found odd as Danger Sense was no longer going off. What? Izuku thought as he looked around for any disturbances but found none. The alarm then went off as Izuku found a text saying it was the press which he found complete bullshit as Danger Sense shouldn't have warned him that largely if it was the press who was presenting the danger. Izuku made his way out to the gates through the vents though he did pass through the lunchroom to check there. He saw that Ida had calmed everyone down and they were all exiting the room calmly which was a good job on his part. Izuku arrived at the gate and examined it which he saw that the gate was in pieces that looked like it was broken down. This couldn't have been the press. Izuku muttered out as Nizu walked up to him who agreed with him. Indeed, something is off. Nizu said as some other staff was around them. Izuku pulled his phone and showed a message to Nizu which told Nizu that Danger Sense had sensed someone in the staff room but when he arrived it had gone off already and no one was present which concerns him that someone may have been in the room before he arrived. Interesting. I will check the cameras to see but we don't know what they would have taken if they indeed were in there. All we can do is prepare for the worse. Nizu said as he told Izuku to join on their trip to the USJ, All Might is meant to go with them but I doubt he will arrive in time. There is also the issue of his limit since he used half of it up as he only has two and a half hours left of the five hour limit he currently has. I don't know if I want to have him waste it there in the event of a second attack when we can have you go instead. It's also about time the students see you in person and meet the teacher's assistant as well. Nizu said which Izuku nodded his head at when All Might arrived at the gate. He quickly came over and asked if everyone was safe which they said they were but had concerns. As of now, I am replacing you at the USJ since you only have half your time left. This way if something happens you have time left to deal with the threats instead of wasting it holding your form in front of the students. I also need to officially meet the students which I can do now anyway. 
Izuku said and All Might nodded his head as he said he was going to the staff room so he wouldn't waste his time. They nodded their heads as he left and Power Loader got to work on fixing the gate while some others helped him. Eraserhead went ahead to go to the classroom since he needed to get the students ready to go to the USJ. Izuka nodded his head as he would sneak onto the top of the bus as they left so he could show himself when they arrived which Eraserhead agreed with since it would be fun to see the students freak out at Izuka's sudden arrival. As they all got to work, Izuka's feeling of something going wrong only increased. What is going to go wrong? Izuku thought as he hides in some trees near the buses outside of the range of the long-range hearing people. Izuku saw them all in their hero outfits and almost chuckled as he saw Hitoshi wearing a copy of the eraser head scarf. That did remind him that Hitoshi was in the middle of training with it which he found so adorable of them. Soon they were all on the bus after Ida waved his arms around since he was the class representative, somehow, in Izuku's sad view as the boy was way too stiff still. Izuku then moved to the top of the bus as he kept a mist form on it so the people inside with hearing quirks wouldn't hear him since he knew for a fact they couldn't hear him making sounds inside of his mist since it covered it. After a short trip on the bus, they arrived at the USJ where 13 was standing outside of the building and greeted them all. Welcome all of you. I am the Rescue Pro Hero 13 and with me today was meant to be All Might but instead, we have 13 was saying as Izuku had used his mist to put enough at people's feet without them knowing except Eraserhead and 13 who have gotten used to Izuku's pranks. You have me. Izuku said as he appeared out of what appeared to be thin air as he laid an arm on 13 and hanged off of her. Indeed, this is the teaching assistant at UA Raiden. You will all see him out and around UA if he is not out on patrol. Today he will be helping us here during your training instead of All Might who needed to deal with other matters on campus. 13 said as some questioned who Raiden was. Izuku said he would answer them as they went through their day and on other occasions since they needed to their training. As such, they made their way into the building as 13 started to explain the rules and what they would be doing. Though as she nearly finished, Danger Sense triggered warning Izuku with all different messages and feelings. One feeling was the feeling of dread. The words that were pushed into his mind were things such as threat, murderous intent, and the word that scared him the most was the words that said something had the feeling of all for one which is what sent Izuku into complete fear as that man was meant to be dead. As Izuku heard those words he quickly turned around as he yelled for Eraserhead to get the students out. Eraserhead get the students out of here now. Izuku yelled as he powered his quirk up and had multiple of them going on such as float, mist, black whips, and all of the passive quirks as well on top of one for all. Izuku wasn't holding back against anything associated with all for one since that was a recipe for disaster. As everyone was confused about what Raiden was doing releasing so much power which felt suffocating, Eraserhead was more concerned than confused as he knew Izuku always held back against people since he could easily kill someone. For him to show so much power meant something dangerous so his mind kicked into overdrive and ordered for them all to escape. Kaminari. Attempt to contact the campus now. Eraser had said as he pushed his students who were confused towards the exit and then it happened as all of the lights flickered on and off and a portal appeared in the center of the building which caught Izuku's glare. Before the portal even fully opened, Izuku had pulled his arm back and let loose an percent punch which sent a sheer amount of wind pressure at the center and ripped the ground up. Everyone was stunned at the devastation but the weird portal only reformed which earned a curse out of Izuku. Damn it, was hoping to stop their quirk from completing. Izuku muttered as he prepared for a fight. Out of the portal that was now stable came an army of villains which Yusuke realized was meant to be the attack that was going to happen today. So UA was the target. That means the attack this morning was a distraction and information gathering mission most likely, Izuku said out loud as a clapping sound was heard from one of the villains down below. Indeed. Now. I don't know who you are but I believe All Might was meant to be here, we did steal his schedule after all which said he was assigned to this class today. So, where is he? asked the person down in the center but Izuku's attention got grabbed but something else. It got grabbed by the monster standing next to the man which had danger sense going off like crazy warning about multiple quirks and connected to all for one which had all of the users warning Izuku to be careful as they have never seen something like that before and had no idea what it could do. All Might is not here today as I've taken his place. 
Though, I would like to know about that monster you have next to you. What is it? Izuku asked hoping the villain would be prideful enough to be an idiot to release the information. Turns out the villain was indeed very prideful. This is the anti-symbol. Our weapon made to kill the symbol of peace. Though, it seems we will have to draw all might here by killing the students off first, said the man who Izuku learned was Shigaraki from the warp user who asked his fellow villain not to give out too much information but got waved off. It doesn't matter, not like they can stop something that was meant to kill All Might after all. All of you go kill them, the villain known as Shigaraki ordered his men as Izuku jumped down as he had spread a large amount of mist out across the building and was only increasing it with a heavy concentration in the plaza. While Izuku jumped down, the villain known as Kurojiri or that is what Shigaraki called him ordered the warp user to spread the students out around the building. The warp user appeared next to the students and tried to warp but eraser had stopped the warp gate. Oh, this will be troublesome. Kurogri said but sadly for the class Bakugo and Kurshimiya both attacked the warp user against the wishes of their teachers which resulted in eraser head getting warped away. I must thank you. If not for you two then I would have been captured. Kurojiri said which made the two students pale. Kurojiri then was attacked by 13 who had their own attack turned on them as Kurojiri had warped most of the students away. Though he was unable to stop Ida from escaping the building to go get more heroes to help out. This was how the USJ attack had started out and the reveal of all for one being alive coming out. Third POV While all of that happened upon the top of the staircase, Raiden, Izuku, was making easy work of all of the thugs down on the ground as Izuku was letting loose inside of his mist that blinded most of the thugs as he had made it thick enough to block most of their views. Izuku was moving around so fast that the lighting off of him was shocking the other villains that were inside of his mist which only made quicker work. Within a minute he had defeated all of the low-level thugs down on the ground which was around or so villains. As he came to a stop and lightened the mist up to allow others to see him and the work he had just completed he heard the enraged scream from the main villain. Seconds later the warp user appeared again as he apologized for allowing a student to escape but then Kurojiri froze as he saw the destruction of their villain army that they had gathered by one man. How about you just give up villains? Izuku said with a smirk on his face hoping to just scare them into surrender but Danger Sense was still going off and sending alarm bells in his mind in regards to the monster off to the side of Shigaraki. You, what is your name? Shigaraki asked and Izuku provided it. I am Raiden, the hero of valor. Izuku responded as he put his arms to the side which caused Shigaraki to throw a tantrum. Shigaraki just cursed Izuku off as he looked around at all of his fallen men. While this happened, Eraserhead had made it back to the plaza and was pushing some of his students towards the staircase which included Shinso, Tsu, and Mineta who had gotten dropped into the water zone where Eraserhead was at as well. They had helped him get back to the shore since he would have had a challenge doing so without them since there were so many water villains there but he now needed all of his students gathered up since he still didn't feel as if everything was over and he was right. As the students he had with him left to the staircase he came up behind Raiden and asked for an update. The monster, be careful of it. Don't fight it and leave it to me no matter what since it will kill you likely in one blow. The main villain I think has a five-pointed touch activation from how he keeps his hands with one finger always away from things and then the warp user. Just make sure students stay away from the monster since I will need to go all out against this thing from what I am feeling off of it. Izuku explained which didn't sit well with eraser head due to the fact that Izuku was so wary of the creature but he nodded his head. Sadly for them, Bakugo and other students all arrived back at the plaza as Bakugo used his explosions and captured the warp user. That would be amazing if not for the fact that the creature made Izuku feel uncomfortable. Another thing happened as well as a rush of ice came from one side and enclosed the creature halfway with one leg and arm encased in the ice. This thing was meant to kill All Might yet it's so weak. Todoroki said as he walked over with a few other students. Really? What is with your class eraser head? Izuku asked dumbfounded that they all decided to come into the most dangerous situation. Todoroki and all of you. Others need to go to the staircase now, Izuku said as his tone was stiffed. Todoroki spoke up and said it was easier to defeat them in numbers which Izuku would agree with normally but they were all untrained and this was a monster to kill all might. 
As Eraserhead went to Bakugo and traded places while he had his quirk on to keep Kurogri from warping, Bakugo was getting ready to move when it all happened. Ah. I am done wasting time, with all of these NPCs thinking they are so powerful. No mo. Get out transport back now. Shigaraki yelled out as the Noma broke from the ice losing its arm and leg which freaked everyone out but it got worse. The so-called anti-symbol called Nomu regenerated its limbs and stepped down on the ground. Within seconds, Izuka's thoughts went across his mind as he made his move based on what he saw as he grabbed Eraserhead and threw him and Bakugo to the side away from Kurogri. Right as he did that he crossed his arms and took a large blow that sent him skidding across the ground and into a wall. That speed, that strength. Indeed, multiple quirks. We have at minimum regeneration, strength quirks, speed quirks, and maybe others as well. Shit, this was really an anti-symbol as it could kill All Might in his state most likely. Izuku thought as he saw Kurojiri appear next to Shigaraki and the Nomu staring at him. Izuku then turned to Eraserhead who was staring at Izuku like everyone else was. Eraserhead get the students away from the fight right now. I can't have them near the attacks or else they will interfere in the fight. Izuku said and Eraserhead nodded his head as he ordered all of the students who made it to the plaza which was about a quarter of the class to the stairs. Todoroki didn't seem like he wanted to but obeyed and so did the others like Bakugo. As they were moving away Shigaraki spoke up with some information. You know, that attack should have kicked or defeated nearly everyone since the Nomu can take All Might in his prime so how did you take the hit? Shigaraki asked and Izuku smirked under his hood which the villain could see. Oh, that's easy. I'm stronger than All Might of course. I have defeated him after all and that was when I was a bit weaker since I've grown since then. Izuku said as he blasted off and landed a punch right into the stomach of the Nomu which sent it moving backward multiple steps shocking the villains. Even Izuku's statement had shocked the students who heard it as they just heard Raiden claim to have defeated All Might. The Nomu though came flying back with punches which Izuku met as the wind picked up around them. Though, Izuku wasn't a one-trick pony in any regard. As he traded blows he made the mist pick up and right when he landed a blow past the Nomu's attacks he went into the mist and pulled his Kodachi sword and enhanced it with one for all a bit as the lighting came off of it as he moved through the mist. As Izuku moved around he cut many blows into the Nomu which made it screech out in pain from the blows. Izuku noticed the entire wounds weren't healing and he wondered why as one of the past users spoke up. They told him that cells can't regenerate fully if they are sealed shut by extreme heat which the lighting is putting off which gave Izuku an idea. Let's see if we can do this. Izuku thought as he powered fully up to percent and pushed it to percent which made his body ache quite a bit at the sheer power going through him. Izuku charged more into his blade and right as the Noma missed a punch, Izuku landed a cut straight to the neck beheading it. The head rolled off as Yusuke came to a quick stop out of the mist which broke the ground quite a bit. Shigaraki was laughing as he said that it wouldn't kill the Nomu but nothing happened which confused the villain. Do release that cells can't regenerate if they are cauterized due to extreme heat, right? Izuku said as he watched the Nomu as he wanted to make sure it stayed dead since it would be annoying if it got back up again. Shigaraki was screaming his head off that it wasn't fair. Kurojiri was trying to get Shigaraki to calm down which he was successful as he pointed out that Raiden was a bit tired from the battle with the Nomu. I believe if we combine your quirk with my portals then we may get him. Though we need to hurry before the other heroes arrive. Kurojiri said which Izuku smirked at. Oh, I may be winded a bit but I still got a lot in me, you villains. So how about you start coughing up information about your master that I know you have. Izuku said as he started to create more mist that had dissipated due to the battle. Izuku then started to get ready to attack and end the fight when the door blew open catching everyone's attention including Izuku's since the students or most of them were up there and he was prepared to jump there quickly to defend them but it was none other than All Might. Sadly for Izuku the warp user teleported himself and Shigaraki away. Damn it. They escaped due to the noise. Izuku cursed as he saw the villains gone. All Might. Help me get the remaining students and defeat the villains in the other zones. You take the right side of the building and I got left. Izuku said as he went into the mist and quickly went off as All Might took care of villains on his side. 
Within moments the villains across the entire place had gotten defeated. All Might was back with his portions of the remaining students a few seconds after Izuku came flying and holding the other students with black whips as he sat them on the ground. Okay, is this everyone? Izuku asked and everyone looked around and confirmed they indeed had students since Ida was with the staff that would be arriving soon. Okay, Yairozu, make me medical supplies so I can help 13 with her wounds. Anyone else needs anything taken care of needs to speak up. Izuku yelled out. Within moments they were taking care of the small wounds on the students which weren't much as 13 was the only major injury individual as the staff arrived quickly after a few more moments. We are her, looks like it's done. Nizu said as he saw all of the students. Yeah, we've taken care of everything though the two main villains escaped with a warp quirk. It's how they got in and likely broke into UA earlier in the day. 13 needs medical attention otherwise no other major wounds that recovery girl can't handle. Izuku reported to Nizu who nodded his head as he told All Might to take 13 to the hospital since it would be a few more minutes for emergency services to arrive. As such, this was the end of the USJ event but on that day they learned that All for One was most likely alive but other secrets had gotten out as well as one student had learned the identity of Raiden. This student was none other than Katsuki Bakugo who recognized the voice of the person from his childhood. As such, Bakugo had been staring at Raiden the entire time they settled down and wanted to talk to them which didn't go unnoticed by Eraserhead or other people like Raiden himself. However, there was more important things for him to do as they needed to have a staff meeting about the attack and the future coming for them, 3RD POV. The students were taken back to the campus while the pro heroes and Izuku dealt with the situation going on at the USJ and as it stood the situation wasn't good as UA had gotten caught with their pants down. Nizu. I believe he is back down and from what the others knew they have never seen a Nomu before during their lifetime so. It means it's a recent creation which confirms he is still alive. Izuku said to Nizu who Izuku had taken to the side. Overall, the situation they were now in wasn't good at all. The school was going to be hit with bad press due to the attack and now they just found out the greatest evil of the Quirk era is alive and kicking. Nizu was silent for a while before he said they would talk about it at the school but he should go ahead and return to relax but also get ready for the staff meeting that he will need to attend. The detective also needed to take his statements as well since he was currently at UA getting the students' statements. Izuku nodded his head and understood as All Might would also be at UA waiting for them and Izuku was sure that All Might would like a heads up earlier than the staff meeting on the fact that the mortal enemy of his is alive most likely as well. Izuku told Nizu goodbye and that he would see him at the school. As Izuku quickly made his way to the school, he arrived in Recovery Girl's office to just get checked out slightly since he had some cuts and lights. Though Recovery Girl was not in the room since she had to deal with the students who were all in their classroom so Izuku was doing his own self-care which he was good at due to years being on his own. For example, one time during his time away from society Izuku had just increased his physical training. Back then, Izuku was currently increasing the difficulty of his physical training which the new part of it was for him to start carrying a large tree trunk that he had cut down for his physical training. As Izuku was carrying the first tree he had an accident when a part of the path he was walking on had given out which caused him to drop the tree and fall with it. As Izuku fell down on the path the tree didn't crush any body parts but the tree did hit his arm and tear the skin up due to the bark that was left on it. This caused a lot of torn skin areas that Izuku had to treat by himself with limited supplies. As Izuku sat on his floor in his home, he could see all the damage but luckily with the guidance of the past users with the little they could give while he was awake, they were able to teach him to treat more seriously wounds. This lead to Izuku having a large amount of skill in self-care which is a useful skill to have. Now, outside of that, it was closing in on time for the staff meeting but Izuku needed to find All Might first so he could tell him about the chance of All for One being alive. Izuku left Recovery Girl's office and found his way to the staff room which required him to pass, and where he could hear the students giving their statements as the door was opened. As Izuku passed he saw one Katsuki Bakugo looking directly at him when he passed by the gate. Izuku saw Katsuki Bakugo's eyes widen in recognition which really surprised Izuku in all honestly. 
Izuku knew Bakugo likely recognized his voice from somewhere but to have a look of recognition surprised Izuku because Izuku didn't honestly believe that Bakugo could really care or remember Izuku since he had run away at the age of with so many years passing. There was also the fact that Bakugo hated Izuku all that time ago as well but Izuku pushed it out of his mind since more important matters. If Bakugo surely figured out his identity then he would come to seek a meeting sooner or later so Izuku decided to leave their meeting in Bakugo's hands. As Izuku arrived outside of the staff room he entered it to find All Might near the window in his skinny form where he had dropped down seeing it was Izuku who entered. You know, it would be easier if you stayed in your skinny form instead of buffing up. Just claim to be an administrative assistant or something for the school which would make it more believable and less risky of you buffing up quickly which does catch the eye. Izuku said as he entered the room. All Might sighed and nodded his head as he apologized for not being able to help at the USJ in time and leaving it to Izuku to deal with the villains. Pops don't worry about that. I am stronger than you now so it was fine. That isn't the issue that we need to deal with. Izuku said and All Might said he knew they would need to track the escaped villains down which Izuku shook his head confusing All Might. Indeed, we need to find them but the issue is the fact that All for One is alive and has returned. Izuku said as All Might shook his head denying it as he said he killed the man. Sadly, he survived somehow. The past users are sure that he is alive as the Nomu or so they called it has not been seen by any users before us. It had the feeling of coming from All for One which means he had to make it recently because if he had something that strong laying around in the past then he should have used it to weaken you before he fought you but he didn't. Instead, he sent it now and an army of villains to try to finish you off. I believe he is injured but not dead from your last fight and is trying to end things for good. Izuku sat as he was sitting across from All Might who was pale at the implications of that man walking the earth once again. All Might had asked how sure the users were and Izuku said they were confident that it was indeed him. Even if it isn't, we still need to act as if he is alive to be on the safe side as whoever can make those have the ability to put multiple quirks into a body to create the Nomu which is just as big of a threat as all for one or more so if these Nomus can be made quickly, Izuku said and All Might could only agree with it. I am so sorry. I've said it many times but fuck I didn't mean for you to face him. I had planned to end him all that time ago but now he is back. All Might said which Izuku only shrugged at it. If anything, I think I am the best to fight him due to the multiple quirks I have and power at my control. I've had years to train it all which has paid off so it has worked out so far. We can only deal with him together when he comes since we will have far better odds at winning with the two of us before your power runs out. Izuku said and All Might agreed as their phones dinged with a notification from Nizu telling them it was time for the meeting. Both of them made it to the staff meeting room and found some of the staff with the detective in the room. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We need to review what we know so far from the battle and the detective needs Raiden's statement as well. Nizu said which Izuku nodded his head at as he asked the detective if his real name would be used in the reports. Only your hero name since you're staffed here at UA and the commission has also limited your information as well since that was a term they had to agree with when Nizu requested the provisional license, said the detective which Izuku was glad about since he was still hiding his personal identity for the most part. Izuku gave his statement as they talked about the battle and how it went. The staff asked him if he believed it could have killed All Might which made Izuku pause. Yes, it could have killed All Might. It could have killed me as well if it was built differently but I had my mind going for me as it was discovered that the Noma's regeneration couldn't overcome having its wounds cauterized shut. As such, I ended the battle by killing it as I cut the head off as my lighting generated enough heat to cause the wound to become cauterized. The Nomu has a regeneration quirk, speed quirk, strength quirk, and from what I could feel when I did. Exchange some blows a possible nullification quirk as well. It truly was made to kill All Might as it was the perfect weapon to do it if it found All Might at the right time which the USJ would likely have been a good shot since All Might would need to concern himself with the students and other villains. Izuku said which concerned everyone at the implications of what was said in the room. After a while, the conversation moved forward to what they knew about the villains, and all information was given. The meeting came to an end which left only those that knew the truth of Izuku's quirk. After a few moments, Izuku brought up the fear they had currently. 
As Nizu and All Might have been informed of and I'm sure you guessed already, All For One has made his appearance once again. The Noma had to be created by him or someone that may be highly associated with him. At this time, it's best to move as he is alive and consider him the mastermind behind the League of Villains with the goals of undermining hero society as well as killing All Might and me. Izuku said to the room that had Nizu, Aizawa, All Might, the detective, and himself in it. Gran Torino would be informed later about this information by Nizu but for now, they would talk about it. Aizawa looked at Izuku and asked how confident he was in taking all for one as it stood. Izuku clenched his hand as he turned one for all on and felt the power go through him but he also felt the will of the past users as they stood strong in their wills within him. As it stands, I am at percent of my strength. Combined with my other aspects then I believe I have a good chance at taking him on since he's never sealed with a multiple quirk user holder like me before. The past users only had their base quirks and one for all but I have them all plus the power of all of the past users in me. If I fail in defeating him then there likely will never be someone capable of taking him on as we must consider the fact that the quirk may grow too strong to even be housed in a human body anymore which is a concern of the other users since it had forced the old quirks out of the core. This is the final chance we have and I am confident with the will of the users behind me that we can bring this to an end. Izuku said as his eyes glowed for a brief moment as he turned it to percent and then shut it off. They were all silent but All Might nod his head and thanked Izuku for being an amazing protege even though he hadn't thought him much which Izuku chuckled at a bit as he reminded All Might that the past users gave Izuku knowledge from All Might's echo when needed so All Might in a way did help teach him with the other users. They all went their separate ways and Izuku returned to his home on campus as he relaxed his body and soon fell asleep. As he opened his eyes he found himself in the dreamscape with the past users. Hello, th. Said the first user of the quirk. Izuku greeted him and soon they were laying out plans on how to try and throw all for one, off when they face him. One idea was to even use his real name since he most likely hasn't been called it since the dawn of quirks which was a good idea that might buy a few seconds but also runs the risk of pissing the man off. After coming to an end in the meeting of the past users, Izuku found Nizu standing next to his asleep body with a look that spelled headaches on his face. What is it? Izuku asked and Nizu sighed as he explained the situation. The Bakugos had called the school requesting a meeting with Nizu and Raiden, Nizu. Nizu explained that they wanted to talk about the USJ and all but in all honestly, Nizu was sure Bakugo had an idea of who Izuku was under the hood since Izuku didn't do anything to hide his voice or face under the hood which Izuku really didn't plan to hide in the long run either. I see, fine. I will be there for the meeting though I wonder what they really want with confirming my identity since there is nothing for them to get from me. Izuku asked and Nizu suggested they may want to know more about where he went and why Inko Midoriya went to prison. Izuku asked if the stuff with his mother was not public knowledge which Nizu shook his head. Due to it involving All Might and you, we had the case sealed from the public. They likely don't even know she went to prison. Nizu suggested which Izuku was honestly shocked at that fact which made him understand that they likely want to know what happened. Izuku honestly didn't know how they would react but guessed he would see the next day. Third POV After the USJ attack had happened, Bakugo was sitting in the classroom giving his statement and being healed by Recovery Girl like everyone else but his mind was elsewhere. Indeed, his mind was back in the USJ but not out of fear or trauma. No, it was going back to the voice of Raiden as it felt and sounded so familiar that he knew it but didn't know where. He couldn't think of anyone that was his age that would have that voice because there was one thing Bakugo was sure about and it was that Raiden was the same age as them or roughly around it. Soon he snapped back to what was going around him as the detective said he was done taking all of their statements but would need them all to wait in the room until they were cleared to go by the school. However, Bakugo zoned out once again as he saw Raiden step right in front of their classroom door as if time slowed down. Bakugo saw the eyes of Raiden that had been slightly covered by the hood as the light was just right to see them and what Bakugo saw shook him to the core as he realized who he believed the voice belonged to. Was that, was that Izuku? Bakugo thought as he saw the green eyes that reminded him of emeralds. However, he knew he couldn't go after Raiden and confirm his theory of Raiden being Izuku Midoriya but that didn't mean he was not going to figure it all out. No, 
Instead he proposed a plan to his parents when he got home as he informed them of what he thought and what he heard. As Bakugo sat on the couch with his mother which his relationship with had gotten better after all of the therapy and even family therapy he spoke to her and his father. You both know about the attack on the school off-site building, the USJ right? Bakugo asked and they said they did and asked if he was okay which he said he was fine. I'm fine but I need your help with something. There is a teacher's assistant at UA for the first years who I want to know the identity of and I need your help. Bakugo said and they asked why he wanted to know the person's name and face when they might hide it for reason. The parents were shocked to learn their child's theory of Raiden being Izuku Midoriya which got their agreement on the plan quickly. Mitsuki Bakugo was on the phone within moments as she called UA to talk to the principal about setting up a meeting between their family, Nizu, and Raiden. Nizu had tried to get Eraserhead in the meeting as well to help keep it calm but Mitsuki was smart and said they wanted it to be a private meeting only for those she asked for which Nizu had to accept since she was the parent of said child. After the phone call was over, she informed the family that they had a meeting the following day at the school at noon. Skipping to the next day, Bakugo with his parents arrived at the school to find Eraserhead waiting for them at the gate since the school was on a higher lockdown so they had to be escorted into the school since the parents didn't have a student or staff ID to get onto campus. As they walked into the building, Eraserhead stopped outside of the principal's office where he turned to the family and gave them a warning, I have an idea on what you are after by having this meeting. I'll warn you to drop any preconceived ideas you had since they are likely wrong. Eraserhead said as he turned around and left them standing in front of Nizu's office. They were about to knock when the door just opened up where they found one principal Nizu sitting at his desk. Come in. He called for them as they entered and sat down. Am I a dog, a bear, a mouse? Who knows but I am the principal of UA, Nizu. Now, how may I help you in today's meeting? Nizu asked as he blatantly ignored the fact that Raiden, Izuku, wasn't in the room like they requested as Nizu was hoping they would have forgotten about it by some miracle. Sadly, they didn't as they asked if Raiden was going to join the meeting as requested which made Nizu nod his head as he snapped his paw, finger. The Bakugos were confused until they noticed someone to their side had appeared out of nowhere but Bakugo remembered how Raiden had moved around so fastly at the USJ so he wasn't completely caught off guard but it was still shocking to find someone in the room that wasn't before. Raiden, Izuku, moved to sit on one side of the room and made no move to lower his hood since he wasn't going to just hand his name and face out so easily unless they pushed for it which he knew they would sadly but he had hoped still. Nizu then once again asked what they needed from UA which got Mistuki talking. I'll be direct in what we wanted out of this meeting. My son has a belief that he knows the identity of your staff person here Raiden due to the voice he heard and the eyes he seen for a brief moment. We are under the current belief that Raiden may be Izuku Midoriya who went missing years ago as well as the son of Inko Midoriya who we lost sudden contact with as well. We are here to try to find answers. Mitsuki Bakugo said as the other two Bakugos looked determined as well. Izuku glanced at Nizu from the side as Nizu looked at him. Izuku knew that Nizu was going to leave the decision on what to reveal to Izuku himself since this was his personal information. What exactly would you do with the information you gain if your questions happen to be true? Izuku asked as he watched their eyes widen as he was sure they clearly recognized his voice. I really don't get why they are so hung up on me since it's been so long. Izuku thought as the past users pushed their thoughts forward to Izuku in an attempt to explain why the Bakugos are hung up or at least the parents were. The two adults Bakugos saw Izuku as a nephew and the fact that they didn't know what Inko Midoriya had done makes them assume she is either dead or missing just like Izuku is missing towards them. They were trying to get closure and answers to the unanswered questions they have had for years. The past users believed on the younger Bakugo that he may have changed and regretted pushing Izuku away as Izuku suddenly vanished which left him no way to ever apologize or try to make it up to Izuku. Izuku just accepted the suggested answers from the past users and waited for the Bakugos to speak as they were silent. Izuku noticed some tears going down their faces and he was honestly shocked Katsuki Bakugo had tears in his eyes while he tried to stop them from going down his face. They really nailed me just on my voice alone. One of the few groups of people that could do that. Izuku thought as he sighed. 
He removed his hood and revealed his face which was an older version of his childhood face which was a bit more defined but clearly the same person that they knew. Mitsuki was up and out of her chair within a few seconds as she hugged Izuku which made him feel unknown feelings since he hasn't really had positive reinforcement touches outside of the staff from UA. After another few seconds, he felt more people hugging him which include Masaru Bakugo and Katsuki Bakugo. Suddenly though, Izuku used his mist and moved out of their hug and onto the other couch in the room across from them as they all almost fell forward. So, what do you want to know? I do reserve the right to refuse answers to anything I don't want to talk about. Izuku said as he saw their stunned expression of him teleporting out of their grasp. The first question was from Katsuki Bakugo who asked how he had a quirk when he was quirkless. Really? You knew I had a quirk at the age of nine when I told you and everyone else at the school. Not my fault you all failed to believe me since I didn't want to commit illegal quirk usage in school even though that school allowed all of the bullshit you and others did with your quirks. Izuku said as he outright used the fact that he had already told Bakugo about getting a quirk to deflect from what his quirk truly was. Katsuki Bakugo looked bashful of himself as he nodded his head as sat down with his parents. Mitsuki then went straight forward with the most direct question as she asked what happened to him and his mother. Izuku chuckled which sounded a bit dark as he looked at her, you never were the one to shy away from asking the direct and important questions even when they shouldn't be asked. Izuku said as he sighed. Nizu gave Izuku a bottle of ibuprofen which he took a few for the oncoming headache he was going to be having from this conversation and talking about memories he would rather be left alone. However, he knew they would always push for it as that was Mitsuka Bakugo's way. The Bakugos looked a bit shocked at Izuku's response as they watched him take ibuprofen. So, in regards to my mother. I don't know where she currently at since I didn't bother to learn what prison she was thrown in for her crimes. For me, I cut myself off from society to survive with the threats that were after me back then. Izuku said bluntly as he had no feelings anymore for Inko Midoriya since he had been shown how kind family was truly meant to be from the UA staff and All Might. The Bakugos though looked pissed, confused, angered, shocked, and many different emotions. Mitsuki though wasn't the one to speak out first as Izuku thought she would be. No, instead it was Katsuki Bakugo who spoke out first as he asked, What the fuck do you mean in prison? She is the nicest lady ever so what crimes could she have committed? Bakugo asked as his world view was shocked. Of course she was nice to you all, you had quirks back then after all while I didn't, Izuku said shocking them as Katsuki Bakugo froze. He stuttered out a what which Izuku gave an answer for as the adult Bakugos were frozen still but Izuku could tell their minds were still listening. 3. I said she was nice to you and others since you all had quirks back then. Of course, the physical abuse didn't start until closer to I ran away but the mental and emotional abuse was going on since roughly after I was declared quirkless. It started out as nothing but evolved into more things which included treating me as glass that could easily break, helicopter parenting, never letting me train to get stronger to help defend against bullies, blamed me for all of the shit you and others did to me, and many other things. Later on, it turned into physical abuse as she would start hitting me but also starved me since I wouldn't agree with what she wanted from me at that point anymore. It got to the point she threatened to kick me out due to all the bullshit the school had reported on me even though I never started anything but got blamed for it due to being quirkless at that time. It was at that time that I ran away from home since I graved all of her money and food I could and fled since I had better odds on my own than with her. She got arrested a few years later when a police detective with a lie detector quirk figured out Dodge Justice the original time since the original person that looked into my missing person case hated me. Izuku said as he explained in a general way of everything that had happened. Izuku didn't really want to go into a high level of detail since it would require him to relive more of the memories that he would rather not relive. The Bakugos looked like they wanted to argue against what Izuku said but they couldn't since it was Izuku who was saying it. Mitsuku though spoke up and asked how they didn't hear about it since they would have heard about the case if Inko had gotten arrested. Ah, the case was sealed from the public since All Might got involved. I had a run-in with All Might a little over half a year or so before I ran away and he ended up on the case since he remembered me. He's also one of the people that found where I was hiding out on my own. 
He also got the lie detector detective involved which is how Inko got caught since All Might found the statements and notes in the case file odd. He had the case sealed since he still needed to find me and didn't want the media or others scaring me off. That was a high chance since back then I trusted very few people. Izuku said with some tension in his tone. Mitsuki now was crying at a large scale while her husband was trying to calm her down. Katsuki though was still trying to come to terms that the person he saw as an amazing individual wasn't as pure as he thought she was. Katsuki though asked where Izuku had run off to and who he was with now which caught Mitsuka's attention as she suggested that they could adopt him which earned a sound from Nizu who faked clearing his throat. Terror it all much? Izuku thought of Nizu who had a small dark look in his eyes that promised pain if anyone tried to steal Izuku from him. I don't need to be adopted by anyone as I've already been adopted. Custody is shared between two parties and if something ever happened to them I have another person who would take me in. Also, my name is no longer Izuku Midoriya, it's Izuku Yagi now. Izuku said and Mitsuki asked if he could meet the people who adopted him. Izuku waved his hand to his side to Nizu which confused them. Nizu is one of my adoptive fathers while Eraserhead, the teacher of 1A, is my other adoptive father. I have more parents due to Aizawa being married and then Mr. Yagi who doesn't have custody of me for reasons that will remain undisclosed. I decided to take Yagi as my last name as I see the man as a father to me as well. Izuku said and explained the current custody situation he is going on. Nizu just sat there smirking since Izuku publicly said he was Nizu's adoptive son which Nizu always gloated about. 3. Other questions? Izuku asked and the Bakugos then asked again where Izuku went when he ran away. Izuku looked at Nizu and they both chuckled a bit. I spent years deep in a forested area away from humans and modern society for the most part. I was able to go to a town when I really needed something but otherwise, I lived 24-7 in a forest just training my body and quirk. It's also a reason why Nizu has partial custody of me since I don't like living in large cities. As such, I live with Nizu in his home on campus away from other people to annoy me. Izuku said with a smirk as he was proud that he survived so long on his own even if he had ghosts of the past users helping him in his mind as they couldn't physically help him. The Bakugos were dumbfounded that Izuku had survived so many years in a forest as they learned how many years he had done it. Katsuki was shocked and stunned as he asked how hard it was to live there. Izuku said he had the skills to survive and was lucky to find an abandoned cabin long forgotten which he used and rebuilt portions. Soon the meeting came to an end as the Bakugos had answers to their long unanswered questions though Izuku did give them a warning. A warning for the road. It would be wise to not speak of the information you learned as I do have people after me and the USJ villains only increase the numbers after my head now. So keep my actual name and the fact you know Raiden personally quiet. Yes. Izuku said and they nodded their heads. Soon they left the campus and Eraserhead came into the room and asked if he should expect issues from Bakugo moving forward which Izuku said he was doubtful due to the warning he gave them. Izuku though wanted to go home and just relax for a day as he was exhausted from talking about his past.